<laughs> you got that much? Just have faith that I do. I just got faith you do, huh? Dude, if you have a billion dollars, you won't be on tits like you'd be in some type of high rolling mansion. Yeah, I am. And I mean, can't you see? Uh, I see what all I see is a bunch of blah blah in your background. Yeah, just have faith that I have a billion. Go ahead. What do you you want to? Why should I believe in God? Well, supposed to have faith that you have a billion. Huh? Okay, well, I'm is there anything wrong with that? Is there anything wrong with having faith? Huh? Anything wrong with having faith? Wrong with having faith? Oh, that's great. Okay, why should I believe in God? Why should you believe in God? I don't know. Why shouldn't you believe in God? Why did you request? Tell me why. Tell me why you don't. I placed the bird. I pl I placed the burden on you, sir. Why don't you believe? I mean, you can believe whatever the heck you want. You know, that's All your right, personal thank life. You. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. What's up, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. Um, why should I believe in God? So I want you to tell me this. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a billion dollars if you can prove that God doesn't exist. You want me yeah, go ahead. Really? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'll give you a proof. Ready yeah, for go ahead. Okay. I'm waiting. Yep. God is a being that only actualizes what ought to be actualized given his omnibenevolent property. So every every event is actualized by God because every event depends on his creative will. And so that means there are no events that should not be actualized given that God only actualizes events that should be actualized. But there are events that shouldn't be actualized. Therefore, there is no God. That's a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but he did just say in there that God does exist. So there you is go. That, what, what was mumbo jumbo about it? The fact that you can't prove any of what you just said. You don't, how would you know if you didn't understand what it meant? Because you went through it really fast so that nobody. Okay, I'll go through each said. premise very slowly for you. All right. First premise it's a given about what um, um, omnibenevolence means, right? Omnibenevolence, omnibenevolence just means. God only actualizes events that should be actualized. Do you so, disagree? So stop. So stop right there. You just said God. So you do believe that God exists? No, it's a premise. Oh, so it's a premise. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Keep going. Do you accept the premise? Uh, not really, because you just said God. Blah, oh, okay. Blah, blah. You don't believe in God. So there you go. Or you don't believe that God is all good, rather. Sorry. Do you oh, think God absolutely. is all good? Absolutely. Okay, so if you don't believe in that premise, you don't believe in all good God. Go, go ahead, keep you going. Your, point. No, that's it. I, I just proved. I mean, like, if you don't accept that premise, then you don't believe in all good God. No, I accept your premise. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So every event depends on God's creative will. Okay. So God's creative will. So you just said there is a God. <laughs> it's an internal kind of critique it's like oh, think of it as a, a yeah a, okay go you ahead know what you. i mean by that jim no i really don't would you okay. a little no my a little what what did you want to say go ahead and i, I i'm so sorry i interrupted you your you tricky little your tricky little word jam that you just said well this is is this are, are these big words for you jim no they're not but go ahead keep going with it okay but you understand thus far Okay, sure. so basically we have two things on the table. God only brings about or actualizes events that should occur. All okay. events depends on God's creative intention or creative will. Okay? okay. That means that there are, are no events um, that shouldn't be actualized. Because if all events depend on God's will and God only wills events that should occur, no event that could be one that should not occur. You get it? No, not really, because it's it it doesn't jive with anything that would actually happen. It doesn't doesn't jive with anything. You don't you don't get this? Okay, you understood the first premise, right? Sure. Okay, you understood the second premise. God, all events depend on God's creative will. So God's creative will. Who who determines God's creative will? God. Okay, so you now do admit that God exists. Jim, do you know what an internal critique is? Just answer me the question. No, I don't you, believe. But you're you don't know it. Look, can you can you watch a movie and criticize the elements of the movie without believing in it? 
possibly that doesn't have anything to do with it, God. Yeah, right. So that's what I'm doing to you. Basically, Christianity okay. is like a, a fictional movie, and I'm showing how it doesn't make any sense. Okay, go ahead. You get it now? Sure, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, good. Little... Okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So first premise, again, I'm going to repeat it again for you. Every um, God is all good, so he only actualizes events that should be actualized. Um, all events depend on God's creative will, or if without God's creative will, nothing would occur. Okay. Um, and so that would mean that there are no events that should not be actualized because all events depend on God's will and God only wills events that should be actualized. You get it? Sure. Go ahead. Yep. Okay. But there are events that should not happen. And so that contradicts one of these premises. So which one are you, which one are you rejecting? Well, there's not events that should not happen because God is oh, the, all of them. Should the, should the Holocaust have happened? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You think that 9 million plus people in the gas chambers, they should have all been gassed by the, the Gustavo? It's evil. God does not have power. Should it happen, to, Jim? According to his will, yes. All right. Is there anything that shouldn't happen? Not according to his will. Okay. Should child rape happen? If it's according to his will, yes. Okay. You just don't believe in, you believe everything that should occur. In That's other words, fine. every. That's yeah. fine. There's a little, there's a little rhetoric. I don't believe little, you. There's a rhetoric. I, I don't believe you, Jim. I, I, I would rather believe, I'd rather think that you're stupid than like thinking that like you're, you think those things should happen. Well, there's a rhetoric and a script that you have to follow. A re it's according. rhetorical. When, when someone says everything in human history, should have occurred. You're committed to staying stuff like, oh, I didn't kick him. That was rough. That was rough, rough, rough. Um, I'm restarting my life because I said stuff. Be right back. We burnt the evidence. They had no record. TikTok has no record. Every time I end, I restart my live, I have to delete the replay. I think that, that does something. But I'd like, I mean, I feel like it does something. You, you, I never got notified when you go live. I isn't, isn't like TikTok weird about that, though? Like, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Hey, Felix. Yeah, TikTok is wild. Hey, YouTube out there. Now we just got to wait for everybody to trickle in. I had to restart my live. You've never gotten a notification from me? That's great. I mean, what can I do? What can I do? But so I get a, I don't get a notifications for a lot of my lives, though. For a lot of, like, the people that I follow, so. Hey, Danny, could you say, could you say the blog for the photo critique? Oh, you're the one that messaged me. Um, The blog, let's see. I... I'll, I have to remind myself to send it to you because I couldn't just Google it. Like I have, it's like a special link apparently. Do, I sometimes, I don't, I don't know. I'm barely paying attention to my thing, but I, I don't think there's an, I'm talking about truly, truly, truly. I might've gotten a notification from you. Awesome tomato. All right. What's up? Let pop. 
What's going on, man? Yeah. Uh, I uh, I think I, I don't know if you remember, we've talked before, but I uh, I was curious to get your thoughts on what do you think about like infinite regress? I don't know if you've heard of Graham Oppie's response to this, and I'm too stupid to understand it. But do you think there's a a problem with infinite regress? And do you think that? I thoughts? definitely think there's no problem with like temporal types of regresses. There are different types of regresses. Um, I haven't thought about explanatory ones or justificatory ones very much. Uh, there's no obvious problem, but someone could give me an argument for why those sorts of regresses are impossible. But in terms of temporal or causal regresses, I see like that are like kind of horizontal, you know, where you have a one, a first cause and then another mm -hmm. moment, you have a second cause and so on and so forth and go, goes ad infinitum backward. I see no logical problem. So, like, you know, the the famous, like, analogy, because to be honest, this was the first argument that I heard for God, and it uh, was rather convincing for me. Um, okay. But, uh, <clears throat> so, like, the sharpshooter analogy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I brought this up to one of my friends who studies philosophy and uh, is also a lot smarter than I am, and he was telling me something about how this only rules out, I guess, like, one type of... Yeah, that's right. Where he re it's a, a request for permission to shoot, and there's an infinite. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there are different types. Like, so that kind of infinite regress is going backward. There's a starting point too, right? The starting point is what the the, the sniper asking for yes. the first request, right? So so for those that don't know, just you know, basically take a sniper. He wants to take a shot. He requires permission from his commander. But that commander needs permission from another commander, and so on and so forth, ad infinitum. And it, it, the question is posed: Will this sniper ever take a shot? I think the answer is no. He will never take the shot because if you need an infinite number, you know, if you're going, if you an infinite number of request permission requests going down, and there's no cases where that's going to be granted because you would have to traverse an infinite, then you the the sniper would never take the shot. But notice, but I don't think that's how time works, right? Because the whole point of of saying that there's an infinite regress of time is that there's no beginning, okay? But in the thought experiment, there's a beginning, which is when the sniper first asked for, first asked for permission. Would that be okay? So I guess I'd push back a little bit. Like, would that be the? I don't. I see that part is just. Um, uh, making it analogous for us to understand that like you know for me to get here my mom had to be here and for my mom like i i don't know what makes you classify that as the beginning i feel like that's just a part of the analogy that makes it uh like there, there are different types of infinite regress take this infinite regress with the same stuff imagine so remember the infinite regress that i just laid out the person starts asking and it never ends okay mm -hmm. whereas if i say Take an infinite regress of commanders, and there's a sniper. Same case, except there's always been permission granting ad infinitum. No start. Will he take the shot? And the answer is yes, he can take the shot. Right? No. There's a difference mm -hmm. between permission request and permission granting. And so time is much more like the case where there's an infinite regress of commanders that have always been granting permission to the point where the sniper can take a shot. That is like time, not like this other case. But wouldn't uh, so the first thing I think about though is um, like uh, I don't think you would agree that I could count. Um, uh, I'll use uh, one of uh, William Lane Craig's analogies, like marbles, right? I think he got into a discussion. I forgot with with which philosopher, but he um, he was giving this example of like you wouldn't be able to count um, infinite amount of like marbles, right? Even with an infinite amount of time. But what you just said sounded like as if there's if there's an infinite uh, if if there's always granting of permission or always that sounds almost like with an infinite amount of time you could count an infinite amount of marbles. But I don't know if that's true. Well, well, the point is that look, I, the first point that I needed to establish is that there's a difference in the analogies, right? One is analogous to time; the other one is not. When in the case where the sniper first requests permission and then that goes in ad infinitum, mm -hmm. there you have a starting point. And no end, but that mm -hmm. is not what those that are rejecting causal finitism, right? For um, they're not saying anything like that. They're saying there's no beginning, but there is an end, and the end here endpoint represents the point at which the present moment, the, the point of the present moment. 
So, so let's take like your like the other one, right? Where you said they're it's always granting permission. So it's it's happening. But you see how it's different from the first one. No, it is. Yeah, I, okay, I can okay. picture it in my mind somewhat. So, um, like let's say in that analogy, um, this this stuff gets weird to talk about, right? Because I, I want to like use language to say like the beginning, but there there'd be no beginning. So there's just an infinite amount of sequences, right? And the sequences that are causing each other they are also just granting permission to cause each other at the same time and et cetera. Um, the, even if they're granting permission at the same time though, w- wouldn't you still what have do you mean at the same time? Is that important? Because I wouldn't think, I wouldn't say they're requesting or sorry, granting permission at the same time. It's a misspeak. I guess that's not. Important. Okay. Okay. I just making sure I thought, I thought I, I could just overlook it, but then you said it twice. I was just making yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. I, yeah, sorry. That was my fault. So let's say, um, uh, I think the words the words you used was all always granting as well, right? So yeah, always granting permission. Yeah. Okay. Except so, for when the shot is taken, then it terminates. Yes. Okay. So which is present day. Which is the present day. Okay. So let's say so always granting permission. Um you have this like is. infinite timeline. Uh th- there wouldn't there still be an infinite amount of events that would have had to happen though? Yeah. That would precede me. Yep. So but I, I guess that's what I'm confused about is how we would be then saying we're traversing that somehow. Yeah. But how, uh, would you say it's just a potential infinite then? That's how you would get around it? It's not a true? Not necessarily. Infinite? See, for me, this seems like it's uh, like not a contradiction, but it doesn't seem it doesn't. I don't know how we can uh, like remedy that. Like you, you, you can. What's traverse. there to remedy? Okay. So there's there's an infinite amount of past events. Okay. And in order for me to be here talking to you on TikTok, those infinite, that infinite past had to have happened, right? Yeah. Okay. So those infinite events, like how, how did we, we, we completed that infinite set then? Yeah. How do you complete an infinite set? What do you mean? How? It's there. There's no end. There is the end here. Rep- there's no beginning. You mean? There's no beginning. You mean? There could maybe be an end. From, that's what maybe I'm not understanding then. Because look, we, there we, are eventually uh, there are three types of infinite sequences yeah, you can think okay. of, right? There's okay. a beginningless sequence with an end, right? Okay. There's a beginningless and endless sequence, and then there's a beginning, a, se- a beginning of a sequence and no end. There's there's are three types, and so and then there's direction. So the, the, that's where a lot of the intuitions are sort of. You know, there's a sort of direction. So in this, in the original cipher case, right, you have a beginning, right, and no end. Okay. okay. Um, and so uh, the modified sniper case is you have no beginning but an end this, when the sniper takes the shot. And so time is, if we take the end point here to be the point yeah. at which yeah. the present time is going to be like that latter case, right? I mean, in fact... It might be more, you know, I, I'm fine with say it's beginning or endless, but here then the end just means the fine, a, a particular point on that number line or on the line of all of the events. Okay, because I think this is somewhat what I, I watched this video of, I think it was Graham Oppie, and he, I think he was saying something similar. He, he was saying that it depends on the type of, of infinite and that he, I don't think he thinks there's an issue either um, with, yeah, with, with a beginningless um infinite but has an end i don't know the proper words but Mm -hmm. he he didn't seem to have an issue with it i think he was saying something similar to what you're saying uh i guess and yeah because like the the examples that craig and others give usually they are like there is some kind of absurdity but then what what i think happens they unjustifiably think that that's what's going on when people reject causal finitism okay so let let me ask you this because when i listened to graham it was on like some like zoom or like some video call it was kind of lower quality so the audio and it was hard to follow but what I initially thought of when he was explaining this is, okay, so there's, let's say there's a, a timeline, right? So you have an infinite that is beginningless, okay? This might sound weird that I'm asking you this, but what does that mean to you? Like, how, how do you understand that? Like, Any way of those three cases. So you can have a case where, well, do you say a timeline with no beginning? Is that what you said? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so either that's compatible with, a series of events where they're all causally connected, moving in a direction, like if you think of it as if you're like an atheist or something, um, and uh, there's no beginning to it, but there could be an end. 
Um, that's how I would see it. If you're a B theorist, there's no you know, you okay. analyze it without Sorry. the terms of past, present, and future. Okay. So what I have in my head though, this is I guess what I'm what I'm picturing though. When when I hear you say this, when I heard Graham Oppie say this, it, it sounds like there's like let's picture a timeline. Okay. And I understand there's gonna be issues here, but let's picture a timeline. And let's say there's no beginning to this timeline, okay? But there is a point at the end of it, right? So mm -hmm. there's no beginning, but a point at the end. To, to say that you could, if you had like a chess piece, right? Just to give visual example, a chess piece on that timeline, okay? And you go, the chess piece, I guess, uh, you like move it a, as far back as you can or something. I don't know, like ad infinitum, uh, and there's no beginning. I, I don't understand when it comes back, how it ever traverses that part. Like, it seems to be like we're separating. The first part was like infinite, but then the latter part had an end so we could reach it. But th there's still the the problem in my head of how do you traverse that initial part? There's no when beginning. you say problem, do you mean logical contradiction? Um, or do you mean something different? Because if you're saying yeah, there's yeah, a problem but there's no logical contradiction then fine right i mean it's unintuitive if you want to call that a problem sure but the kind of problem that i'm wondering is whether causal finitism has to be true right what in other words whether the negation of causal finitism um implies a contradiction that's the relevant kind of problem that i'm interested in well that's i just repeated redundant but that's the problem that I'm interested in. Is that type of problem? I mean, I don't know if I could give you like, like you know, not obviously not like excluded middle or or you know, a. Is well, you did a. with well, you can derive some kind of problem in the sniper case. In the sniper case, yes, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe. And all those other cases, like I think they give like there are a lot of cases that they give, which I said I agree it leads to a, some kind of contradiction or absurdity. Um, but it's just not in the case of causal, I guess, infinitism. Okay, so I'll put it, I guess we could put it this way, and I could probably maybe like build this out like premise by premise, but like, I guess my first question to you would be like, um, like, uh, okay, can you count to infinity? Well, counting to infinity doesn't really yeah. make sense to begin with, because two implies some like it's a particular value, but infinity is not a particular value. Okay, okay can you count an infinite amount of numbers? Yeah. A, a, tr a true or like potential infinite like, you no, like there's no discrete particular value that matches a natural number yeah maybe i just don't understand the concept of infinity when people are using this then because i i'm i'm picturing infinite as as quite literally something that you you cannot um... look, look 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 maybe think of does this make sense to you um like where's my ball okay so the ball is bouncing it began to bounce right Okay. Now, could you imagine a world where it's always been doing this and never began, never stopped? What's, um, what's hard to understand about that, intuitively speaking? So in this world, yeah. it began to bounce. Okay. But in another possible world, it's always been bouncing. I see no problem. Okay. You basically have you basically have to find some kind of contradiction in the statement. The ball's always been bouncing. And then it stopped. Can you hear me okay? Whoops. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Now, yeah I got a call. Keep in mind that this is not but... like causal finitism is coherent to me. There could be a first cause. But what they want to say is that it, like it's like if there are causes, there's just like it, there has to be a first cause or something like that, right? That's I mean it could be that they're right that causal finitism finitism is true, but I, I mean but that but they're saying they're right because there's an impossibility to the contrary, which is a very diff, I mean it's a difficult claim and they try but you basically have to find a contradiction saying this has always been bouncing, and then it stops. Mm. Okay. Um, it's always been bouncing. Yeah. And so always is it's been bouncing. Didn't have a beginning. Uh, didn't have so a beginning. It didn't have a beginning. So when we, the point is that um, if you were to ask how many times did it bounce? Yes. There's no answer to that. 
there's no particular value. So how do we get to the part? How, how do we ever? I guess okay. How do we ever get to the part where it stops though? How does because, that happen? Well, well, I'm more saying because prior to it stopping. Do you think God is timeless? I don't know if you're a yeah. theist or not. Um, I'm more of like a deist. Okay. Do you think God is timeless? Yeah, I'd say he's outside of space. Okay, of so then this has always been bouncing, and then for whatever reason, the t- this timeless God stops it. What's the problem? Um, well, that there would be explanatory power in inserting God right there, though. Like, that sure. would make sense. Sure, yeah. but there, the point is that there's no absurdity in saying that there's always it's always been bouncing because the problem isn't why is it that we reach to this pre- present moment rather than a different one or rather you know i mean it, maybe god al- allows for each moment to progress i don't know it oh the- well no sorry actually well i guess no it, it actually would have a starting point no yeah i would say it would it what had a starting to, point the ball yeah no no i'm telling you in a possible world this ball has always been bouncing and then it stops and you ask me how did it stop? Well, let's say in this possible world, there's a deist, timeless God. And he just decided that for it to stop at some point. And there's no contradiction in that possible world. Maybe it's because there's only like, well, okay. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess there's no issue. I guess the, the way that I'm thinking about this, though, is that the uh, when we look at... When we look at... Um, if we actually just don't even make it analogous, just say that in again, in order for me to get here, right, there was an infinite amount of events that had to happen for me to get here. We agreed on that. Yeah. Okay. So when when we say that, we mean there is no finite. There's no number we could attribute to how many events took place before I got exactly. here. Exactly. Right. Okay. And would you would you um like equivocate uh that to saying like would you would you say infinity is is this like a misuse to say infinity is large or it's like a large amount of I've heard there are different sizes of infinities, but I'm not so sure of the relevance of that here. Okay, so there was an infinite amount of events that had to happen prior to me being here. Um, I am here. Mm-hmm. Yep. So so there in my head, intuitively, that would mean if we started to count them. We started. Okay, I won't say start. I'll just say intuitively there now is a reference point to say there's a finite number of events that happened prior to me. There, there is no – it's infinite. That's that's but, changing the, the case, right? There is no particular value that – there's no value that matches the natural numbers in, in terms of how many events there are. Or there were. Okay, I'm I'm I'll ask this one like in a different way. Slightly, we don't have to like harp on this part. We'll get off of it. Maybe it's I'm just not understanding. But they, let's picture like a like a like an arrow. Okay, okay. and let's just picture we're gonna send it back like and, a ray or an arrow because that makes a difference. An arrow. Let's do an arrow. Okay, so you mean a line? Sure. It's just for visual. A yeah. line. Well, a line has no. Well, the way I'm understanding the line here is that you know you have the two arrows. There's no, it extends infinitely across the plane. Okay, actually, you're right, because that's going to represent a timeline. Let's actually not do that. Let's just, let's say there's a golf ball, okay? Let's just say there's a golf ball. There's a ball. Yeah, there's a ball, okay? And right now, let's say I'm with the ball, okay? Like, I'm looking at it. Let's just say I have the ball. And somehow we take that that ball and we send it back in time, okay, to okay. go through all the so events. So that's a start. Um... Is that it, that doesn't represent a start here, does it? No, no, it doesn't need to. Okay, go ahead. So, okay, so we we go we we throw the ball back in time, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's say we send it back in time, and it goes through all the events, or it's attempting to. Okay, go through all the events. It's passing through. A, the, there's a direction that does not have an end. Yes, it's going okay. in the direction that does not have an end, um, and the that direction has all of the events that 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 have preceded passed. that preceded me right okay. okay so my question to you is 
Uh, will it ever get to the first event? There is no first event. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so no. Right. It'll. Yeah. It's a. It's a. Okay. It's, a, it's a weird question considering the hypothetical we. Oh, okay. So it'll travel at infinitum. Right. Okay. Now. Um. Okay, now let's do this. Okay, so stay with me on this. Let's okay. say that it traveled for <laughs> language is gonna fail us. Let's let's say that uh, it traveled at infinitum in that direction. Okay, so it's it's again. There's a direction. It's moved. That's just yes. a repeat of the last claim that it's it's traveling in a direction where yes. there's no end. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Sure. I. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. H- how do you how do you send it back and how does it what do you mean? How do you send it back? Like, how yeah. would it retraverse? Or I guess it wouldn't have traveled. It changed directions, it and yeah. it could go back toward you. Yeah. At, yeah, yeah. at any point that is traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I understand now. Look, if you want to, um, do you know Alex Malpass? Yes. Yeah. He talks about this in a video for in about an hour, and there's a couple people that were listening to him and didn't understand it, so we had to explain it over again so it might be good because i this video i listened to because I, I don't think you're stupid because it took me a while to understand this because i'm i ran the same argument i used to run a very a poor man's version of the kalam right because right. i didn't know anything when i was studying this stuff i would yet i was arguing for it so i would give this argument as well so i had to like go through what you're going through there's a video um uh on ask yourself um youtube channel um Muhammad Hijab. <laughs> Let me see. Um, Alex Malpass, Muhammad Hijab. Let me get you the exact title. Okay, it's called Alex Malpass's. Alex Malpass explains Muhammad Hijab Hamza's confusion. Alex Malpass. Explains, explains Hamza confusion, and you'll find it. Okay, and he's a uh, Alex Malpass. Is he? Uh, he's an atheist. He's an atheist philosopher. Okay, he's debated then, William Lane Craig. I think on this. Oh, he has. Mm-hmm. On the on. In fact, this I like I like both. I, I respect the hell out of Avi, but I like Alex Malpass better. Really? Okay. Is Alex Malpass the guy with brown hair? He's like Australian or something. He's he's um I guess in the uk and oh mm-hmm. he has he's basically bald okay okay so, and then um do you know uh you probably are familiar with ip unfortunately <laughs> okay uh, so you, you've had like interactions with him yes okay have you guys debated 20 minutes 25 minutes yes he did he did horribly he gave up classical logic on live you, Oh, like he rejected classical logic? Yep. That's a little insane. Oh, okay. to, 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 in order to make sense of the Trinity. But I don't I don't have a problem with people rejecting classical logic, but when they just... But he didn't even... I asked him, okay, so what system of logic do you hold to? And he didn't even know. So it seems like he was just trying... Because he contradicted himself during the discussion, like flat-out contradiction. And to save himself, he rejected the transitive, the transitivity of identity. Mm. which I, you know, I don't think he, if someone, if his debate opponents ever did that to him, right? Like they rejected the transitivity identity, then he'd treat them like, like they were stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, cause my other, my other thing I was going to ask you about, um, I, I, wait, someone said he said Quine's logic, but Quine accepts classical logic. He later on meant Kleinian logic, but clean or Kleins logic, which doesn't even help him. So it fucks, he's fucked either way. He didn't even know what he was talking about. In fact, the you know who he, if you watch that debate, it's on my YouTube channel. You know the philosopher that he appealed to to try to thwart me at one point in the discussion. Why don't you guess? Oh, are you there? Oh, are you asking me? I'm sorry. I thought you were talking. Yeah. About what was the philosopher we just talked? Philosopher we just talked to talked about? Oh, Alex Malpass. He appealed to Alex Malpass. Um, and then I um, went to Alex Malpass. Mal, Malpass said he doesn't know what he's talking about. So oh, he appealed to him. Oh, I understand. Yeah, for the he appealed to a philosopher that I didn't even bring up, 
that I knew personally. I went to Malpass and say, are, is he representing you correctly? Or does he know, are these claims about logic, you know, more or less track? And Malpass says, no, no. And he actually said he doesn't know what he's talking about. In fact, I can quote, let me, let me quote this. Remember guys, this is, the, this is the philosopher that IP appealed to. And this is not private information I'm sharing here. I asked Malpass. Crap, my internet is going to, all stupid on me. Like, let me quote you what Malpass said about IP. Um, but yeah, what? Why did you bring? Why did you want to bring him up? IP. Um, he has this like. Uh, it definitely could be like a little wooey, to be honest, because it's way over my head, and I think it might have been a little over his. But he he got on this debate, uh, where he was talking about this concept of consciousness and oh how like consciousness and like collapsing like um collapsing like reality or something or like it like uh like reality being dependent on consciousness and um some of these abstract uh like concepts i guess was he was pointing to like the proof of god so like i think i for me who hasn't i haven't do I haven't gone too deep into this, but like, are you familiar with like, uh, I feel like it's been popping up left and right on TikTok now, like the tag argument or like, yes. the... okay. So is the tag argument, like, I don't know if this is, if uh, I'm going to name someone else that maybe you're not a fan of, but I don't think most people are the um, uh, Q-top, right? So like, I don't know if, if I've heard Q-top say stuff like this, where like the, the abstract concepts, right. That we have are like, proof for god like you you can't ground logic you can't ground uh mathematics you can't ground numbers um mm -hmm. without god yeah and um this is interesting to me not when i first from q top but when i've looked up these kinds of concepts like does any of that resonate with you because i know you teach philosophy but like no I, none it's probably one of the worst can like it's probably one of the worst ways to i mean like i, I it, it's better it's it's there are forms of it. They're a little bit more respectable. Like um, people argue propositions. There are propositions. Propositions are mental content, yet they're necessarily true propositions. And so, insofar as they're, they're going to be truths that are, that are true in every moment of time. So that requires a proposition. And if propositions are mental, then there needs to be something mental in all events. That's a little. That's a little bit more um, respectable. But the typical tag. People don't do that, um, you know. But I, I mean, both. But both. In, if I had to put a scale on, like how, like there is, there is really no live debate on precept and 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 the academic literature and philosophy of religion. Like people are just not really taking it seriously, and I think that's for good reason. Oh, um, really? Mm -hmm. There's no one who really like. I don't know the... any. I mean, I don't, I mean, look, my, I'm not an expert, but I don't know anybody that's publishing or writing on this in the philosophy of religion. Really? Mm -mm. So what do you, I mean, from, from the atheist standpoint though, I mean, what, obviously it's not going to be good enough to where you're convinced because you obviously aren't convinced, but I mean, for you, where do these things rank? Like, what, what do you think always was the most interesting for you? At least as for, far as arguments go. Yeah. And maybe well, look, by I think all of these serious. arguments are very interesting to talk about. Right. I, I, I think the people that run them generally, you know, have like, I, I I, I, I have, um, if I got to debate Craig, that would be an honor, okay, for me, okay, I wouldn't think, whereas debating IP would just be homework, like, it's just, you know, but, you know, the, the people that, I mean, and so that just goes to say that the arguments they write about, like, cosmological arguments, ontological arguments. Well, because Craig is taken seriously, he's, he's right, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's. Yeah, I would say, I mean, look, any any article like if you look at the scp under cosmological argument craig is going to be cited numerous yeah. times right so yes he's taken seriously and so so far as those citations and stuff like that and if you want to learn about like good presentations of kalam style cosmological arguments you're gonna i don't see how you could avoid you know any craig material um i don't think there's really anything else that he's well because i think it was actually and again i might be confusing him for someone else i don't think it was 
William Lane Craig debated, I think, maybe I watched this. I think you just said this, that he debated the concept of infinity, right, or infinite regression with, was it Malpass? Prob- yeah, he did debate. I mean, I, I, I've lost track. Of because I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if Malpass talked to Craig twice, but I think he only did one time. I forgot what it was over. But no, I, I take Craig seriously. Um, I mean, I teach philosophy religion. We we actually looked at Craig Craig's um, paper on the Kalam. We read parts of it. Mm. Um, I'm probably never going to mention him again, though. Um, there's just better people to mention at that point. I mean, but yeah, I mean, I, Craig is I take to be a serious academic, especially on that topic. What do you think about serious academic as far as someone you would take seriously who's a theist? Well, but on the Kalam, look, I. If I want to learn about cosmological arguments, specifically Kalam, not necessarily the Kalam, not the Kalam. Like, let's just say a, a theist philosopher who's who's a true. Look, it, it, look, all these people specialize like crazy, right? Like, it's like science. Like, what scientists do I take seriously? Well, just depend. Like, I don't take Neil deGrasse Tyson very seriously on biology. What about Bill? What about Bill Nye, the science guy? Well, I only. I think I don't. I think <laughs> he doesn't even have a specialization. Maybe at best engineering or yeah. Uh, the 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 point is is that there are different topics. And there are people to look to for each kind of specific, specified topic. Sure. I don't know, even with Oppie, right? Like Oppie's, I, you know, what's funny is that Oppie's, I don't really know his, what he's specifically, I guess naturally, but he do, he's done tons of work on the ontological argument. Like if you want to learn about ontological arguments right now, like living philosopher, I think Oppie might be the best one, like theist or atheist aside. I'm trying to think of, um, yeah, like I think he wrote the SCP entry on nonological arguments too. Um, so is that like, like the te- is that like the tenses thing he was talking about before? Like he was telling William Lane Craig about this. I wrote like his thesis on like tenses, like like uh, like future and and past and um, I I don't know what his dissertation or his thesis was. Um, but the uh, yeah, Coons like Rob um Rob Coons is a is renowned for his metaphysics. Like he wrote, um, I co-authored a book called the Re- the Alice of, what is it? Um, the Alice of Me- of Reality. And as Coons and someone else, crap. I bet, I bet Amder knows. Let me see. Coons and Timothy something. But yeah, if you want to learn about metaphysics, if you took a class, on metaphysics and if robert coon rob coons was your your professor you'd you'd be in good hands on metaphysics yeah but i wouldn't i wouldn't go to rob coons on like other stuff hmm. my so metaphysics guess, is really broad to be fair though yeah and you say metaphysics not meta ethics but yeah i wouldn't go to rob coons on meta ethics oh no okay and do you um do you uh so, so you don't you don't think there's any any issue like with um, like w- would you say it's fair to say then and maybe this sounds like absurd to some people watching this but like without without properly let's say like grounding like logic or anything like that or even like like classical logic right like there's some kind of like presupp- presupposition that you have that these things are true though, right? Look, I don't really have settled views on look. You're asking me how I think about logic and stuff. Well, like you presuppose it's it's true. Um, I wouldn't. There might be an interpretation of that that I would accept. I mean, my view is that logic is sort of there's elements of logic that are sort of built into agency, like a dichotomy. I don't think. I mean, that's all. You know, either A or B or A or not A. You know, like. You know, understand what a dichotomy is is sort of built into the idea of an agent because they have beliefs, and beliefs require understanding of the difference between truth and falsity, or truth and not truth. So, like, do I presuppose truth? I mean, do I presppose the concept of dichotomy? Uh, it's so well, weird guess, to say. Well, no, I think you could take it like, like, let's say, like, because I understand what you're saying. Yeah, th- there's this like, like implied, I guess, like dichotomy or forced dichotomy where uh, part of being an agent, right, you have these different choices or interactions you have to make and it's either going to be like true or false. So you just said? Well, that's just an example of a kind of view where certain concepts are built into being a person. And I think that, yeah, yeah. 
So asking, say, say to say, to say that I presuppose those things, I mean, okay, there might, I mean, like, I don't infer to those. And if that's what you mean by presuppose, then yeah. I mean, like, I mean, like there, there's a possible world where sure it's, it's built in and it's a part of being a, a moral agent, but there's also a, a possible world where that doesn't have any like truth claim to it. It would just mean that. No, it's like, no. Well, maybe I've misunderstood you, but there is no possible world where you're an agent and you don't have those concepts. No, no, sorry. So, yes. Yeah, so, so, um, you always have those concepts, but I'm saying, uh, that doesn't make any kind of implication as far as like, I guess, true reality or, or what is like a, like a foundational truth or something like that. It just, it, all that it means is that you have these concepts and you believe them to be true or well, like if you, you have the concepts you have, then there's something true. Uh, about no. Those con- yeah. well, no. Why are you telling you're t- you're so confident? How are you so confident saying well, this? Okay, because this is um. Be careful, about right? Because I okay. thought about this. No, Concept, no. It's fair. Daddy, well, to I have know. a concept of a dichotomy, then it's going to be true that it you're going to have some. Okay, let me give on you one side. Let me give you an analogy, and yeah, I absolutely could look like an idiot. All right, you're a lot more advanced on this topic than me. But what I'm hearing you say is, um, okay, you, you can have something. Let's say, let's say, let's say another like thing right about about being a moral agent like um like honestly morality is a good example okay Mora- morality is actually a great example so like oh, okay. you have you have things that you believe are, are right and wrong um i'm not asking for the grounding i'm just saying you believe there are things that are right and wrong right yeah okay and maybe this is also somehow um like it's just a concept that moral agents have, right? It's yeah, that's kind of like that's similar. I mean, people interpret Kant as saying that. I think Kant goes, Kant has like one interpretation of Kant is that like yeah, those these moral truths or whatever are uh, have some kind of relation agency, a necessary relation agency, or even built into agency, depending on how you yeah. think about Kant. I mean, I think he goes too far with moral truths, but I I, I yeah. want to say there's a a small a subset of what you might have in mind that is built into agency so I yeah include moral tr- moral truths okay well then i guess so okay i guess that's what i'm saying and maybe for you you would disagree but maybe maybe there's some people that would say like yes like it's it's objective that certain things are 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 immoral um or or something like that like or or even thoughts that you have where things are right and wrong right like so, you, so repeat the first so repeat the so I okay. missed it. I heard. I didn't hear it. That I, I mean, it's not like I. So just repeat it. Okay. There's there's beliefs that you hold. There's uh-huh. moral beliefs that you hold. That but you. I, I, when you say moral beliefs, do am I interpreting you correctly there? The um, I think. I'm trying to be careful with my words. Well, moral beliefs. You, there's so many views about what that could what you might mean there. Okay, you have a you have a concept of things that you think are right and wrong, whether immoral or moral. I have a concept of what what it means to say good or bad, and I think that is built into agency. Okay, perfect. Per- okay, that's okay. actually perfect. So now we're on. We I don't need to even go down the rest. Okay, so yes, yeah, so you, you have a concept of good and bad, and you would say that uh, to some extent is built into agency. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. That statement, right? Um, somewhat similar to. Um, uh logic or what do you you didn't attach a specific word to it but what was the other thing that you think is built into agency like the that notion you, of a dichotomy okay yep so the notion of a dichotomy and let's say um good and bad Th- these are things that are built into agency to mm-hmm. some extent but I, I hope i hope we i hope it doesn't matter right now but i have you know good and bad might mean something different to you than to me. that's okay okay no, go that's ahead. okay that's not where i'm going so um my only my only point is though is is you knowing good and bad and that is built into being an agency um does that imply any truth to like your good and bad sure to you right that's what you're gonna say no to anyone well we might not agree though right maybe i was going there is that what you just said (laughs) well there's a sense of good or bad where i just mean in or out of accord with my commitments Right. So, you know, that notion, I think you have that notion. I think trivially speaking, if something's out of accord with your commitment, that's, that's bad. Right. All else being equal. Outside of my 
what did you say outside of my commitments? Something's my notion of that is when it's when something's out of accord with the commitment. So if you're committed to, I don't know, when you're, if you're committed to getting water from the fridge and at T1 and then you don't, it's out of accord with the commitment that you have. And so that is that you have that notion of what it means to be in accord or out of accord with the commitment that you have. So if but, I have if I have a commitment that's that's to to do something atrocious to someone and it doesn't happen, that would be bad that it didn't happen. All else being equal. What do you mean by all else being equal? Bracketing other commitments. So I mean the, to say that some commitment is to do something atrocious is to bring in other, in my view, other commitments or other norms. Because you're, oh, how you're evaluating oh. atrocious atrocity yeah. except to appeal to another commitment or value yeah 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 mm -hmm. but but yeah so yeah you would agree that it's that it's bad that i couldn't do that but just in accordance with um yeah there's a notion look there are a lot of notions of bad there are a lot of people use the, those terms but but there is a notion that it is built into us that recognizes what it means to have a commitment and for things to be in or out of accord with that commitment and that is what, that's all I'm saying is building agency as far as good and bad. That's very interesting. Yeah. I, um, I think of like morality is more of like, uh, like should or shouldn't happen. Right. Like ought. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you have a, all else being equal, if you're committed to X, you ought to do X. Interesting. But, um, where does the room, where's the room for you to make a call of something I'm doing that's good or bad, just on your commitment to maybe not do that thing. Well, I might be, I might be appealing to your commitments, or, or or a set of shared commitments. I'm also might be using the term good descriptively. I mean, just, you know, these the term good and bad are used, and so it's in a variety of ways. So, they're not they're normative and non-normative notions of uh, or yeah, usages of the term good and bad. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say. Let's say if I if I was like yeah like I hurt someone yesterday like I like like physically like hurt them or something mm -hmm. and I would ask you like do you think that was good or bad what would you say or what would you ask me? Well, I don't know enough about the situation, but it could be very well be it could. I mean, you know, were, self. They, I just walked up to them and and physically hurt them. They weren't doing anything. Let's use an example. So, a very like if someone, the last person that robbed a bank or scammed an elderly person of their retirement. Money, yeah. Right. When I'm saying that's bad, I'm actually presuming that we have a shared commitment there. Like I wouldn't, I feel like I wouldn't have to, I think I know you well enough to assume that we have a shared commitment about that. That if we were in a commitment to stop it, if we were in the position to stop it. Mm. But we're not, right? I mean, we're not in the position, I don't know who the last person the scammers got. But if I knew that you're, that some old lady is about to be scammed, I knew her name and all of her retirement is about to go away, then I would be, I'd have the commitment to stop it. And so thus I should call the police. And I think you should call the police too, given what I understand about you. Now, if your commitments are literally just the inversion of my commitments, I really don't know what I would be saying other than like what you're doing or what you're lack, what you're not doing by not calling the police is out of accord with my commitments or yeah, our commitments. Yeah, yeah, that was the next question because I was going to say, what if the, the scammers, the, the scammers' commitment though is to to take. Yeah, what money. am I supposed to say to the scammers? Now that's why I think a lot of these scammers, right? I think it, you can guilt them and you can get them to form similar commitments to you, right? Like you can point them. Look at this old lady. She was a um, a custodian at a university for thirty years, and you told took all of her retirement money and now she has to move in back with her i can paint the saddest story ever just so that i because I, I have an idea of the kinds of values or commitments that they have such that they would then form a value or commitment which i'm using these interchangeably to um not do that again so so uh, like uh, essentially though in order to convince because everyone's going to have different commitments, right? So everyone's going to have a different goal that they want to reach. And if if mine are at odds with yours, the only way you would say to remedy that is to just get me to have similar commitments that you have. You could you could stop them, you can kill them, you can coerce them. You could do that stuff too. That's actually what tends to happen. Manipulation, violence, uh, intimidation, you know, um threats, I mean cancel culture, you know. <laughs> 
that stuff is just to manipulate people into getting the same values as you have as, as they do right it seems such a it's funny because this is a just like an emotional statement there's no like issue with i think you're right i just feel like it, it feels like a very cold way to a lot that. of this is not a philosophical issue right people mistake the the stuff that happens in everyday life when what when we're talking about good or bad or right or wrong mistake what's going on there um conflating that like making that into some deep philosophical issue really it's a practice it's a lot of practical issues that are very particularized in terms of how to solve and there's not like a general philosophical like approach uh, at least that's my view i mean like the way I, I use a theological example like you know like satan right satan rebels against god god's solution is not to like convince them of the moral facts whatever mm-hmm. those might be it's to throw it's to dunk them in a lake of fire it's to destroy him and his followers right that that's how i in fact the way that i see dis- moral disagreement or value disagreement value disharmony i actually think the bible is right and and sorry not that the bible's right but the bible um, depicts clip. a story that resonates with me in terms of how to handle people that rebel against you yeah, don't put them in the lake yeah send them to hell <laughs> Well, I mean, okay. So, it's not like God's sitting there having philosophical conversations with Satan. He's like, okay, this is your decision. This sure. Is what happens. But so you wouldn't. So then again, like, and this is the common, uh, like, uh, theist gotcha question, though, right? Like, you're when you say it's bad to like eat a baby, you're really just saying it doesn't align with your commitments. But if our commitments are not aligned, then there's really nothing else you could do. You wouldn't be able to claim that. I'm doing something bad because I could just say well, I I'm could appeal to an institutional norm, but I mean, like I could say it's against the law. That's a kind of out of accordance. Just the appeal to a, like authority. Yeah, but that's, yeah, exactly. That's what Christians do. They appeal to the authority of God, right? You could you could outsource your commitments to other people. That they yeah, care about. but okay, but the the appeal to God would be that like God is is infallible. But then the appeal to like I feel like the issue with appeal to legality or authority is that it, it's fallible. I don't see that. I don't see. Okay, when you say fallible about what? I'm infallible with respect to what my commitments are. I know what the. Well, I just think okay. I, I guess it's just not. And again, it's it's not like these things you're saying could be true, and it, it's it's really not your job to make it seem satisfying for me. I just feel like unsatisfied. I guess with with that thought process, because then I I think about I think about when. When, when, like I just told you, right? I could have different commitments than you. So technically you couldn't say it's like bad, like for what I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing something good because it's in line with my commitments to like eat babies or something. But then you'd have to maybe appeal to a, a legality or authority, but then that's- All right, but more- let's say you're right. Let's, let's say there's a sense of right, good or bad that's independent of commitments at all. Totally. Like, okay. Uh, wow, thanks Bruce for the 10 bucks. I appreciate it. Wow, I can get Subway tomorrow. Um. The um, what am I talking about? So look, I mean, let's say you're right that there's a a sense of good or bad or moral, yeah. immoral, moral that's independent of commitments. Yeah. Well, okay, you can give the scammer those facts, but then there is is it if your if your problem is I'm not satisfied. Well, okay, you can they, they look here here are these moral facts. You're out of accord with them. They'll just say, well, so what? I don't give a fuck about that. I care about my own values. I mean, isn't that dissatisfactory? Don't you care more when you can appeal to an authority that can do something about it? Right? Like when you say that the government is going to get you or your mom, no, no, I'm going to tell you. Danny, you're, no, Danny, you're okay, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're, you're quite literally right. I, I, that's, I guess that's what I'm trying to say is I actually think what you're saying is um, I, I would say, unfortunately, like there is no outside um, like all overseeing maybe like a moral truth that we have mm-hmm. ought to follow it, it is it's, it's largely probably preference based and goal oriented um, well but, but this I, is why I like theism like this is the one reason that i would ever like theism it's because if god has my my own commitments if god's values and my values are yes. completely shared god becomes a tool of force yes yes right yes. That's, so, so that's what's that's interesting what about I mean the god by case not, by not satisfying right i want there to be um something that i can point to like that because the rest These are, are the consequences yeah yeah you go to hell <laughs> oh, yeah, really, I mean, yeah. yeah i don't even i don't even think i want that for most bad people but the, yeah, the right. point is that if god god would be awesome if he shared my values because then all the people i disvalue would be punished yeah well or, ironically, my, or, or or changed in some way yeah i mean 
ironically though, you probably have a lot of uh, like Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, I probably do. But I mean, the th the thing is, is that like there's there's peripheral issues because I look at this world and this is this world is completely just valuable to me, um, and so I feel like God has something else in mind than I do. So I don't think God and I share values at all. And then when you when uh and this is my last one, I'll hop off someone else uh -huh. be a little more confrontational with you. The uh you, you you'd say too when when you uh are unalived it's just pretty much nothingness, right? Probably. I, I could be wrong. Do you want to be wrong? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I wanna well, live longer so than eighty some, and ninety some people, years. Some well, some people actually look forward to it. They they say that it's actually Yeah, and I, those the, the those people are crazy to me, but yeah, I'm <laughs> Okay. I, I don't know anybody that wants to live for a long time that doesn't Miserably. want to live for a long time and in a happy way. Like I just, yeah, you know, so yeah. I do hope that there's an afterlife. I hope that I've, I've seen my loved ones and friends and I hope we're very happy. I, yeah. I, 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 I yearn for that. That's probably how religion started. Probably other people yearning for that. Yeah, I'm not going to pretend to know, but I think that's a lot of, one of the reasons why I think religious belief can be, um can help you cope but anyways okay i'll let you go yeah all right see you yeah later. thanks brother bye <sighs> what's up bat hey how are you just finding you what do you want to talk about yeah yeah doing good um is it true about the price was it true? Just have faith that it's true. Okay. Okay. So, true about God. Um, I think we have historical evidence. We have the scriptures um, that talk about the Christian God, of course, which I am forced to say that is the only one true God. The other religions, of course, have a lot of wisdom to share, but those are human religions, mythology, and no uh, the true message of a higher being, you know. So Jesus Christ would be the only one, uh, the Son of God, God made, uh, incarnated and came to the world and all of How that. How do you know so God incarnated? What? How do you know that God incarnated? Well, uh, that... The, the key part of all of this is, or, or, or the key part of all of that is his resurrection the previous stuff about that he's the Wait, son so of God. if someone resurrects they're they're an incarnation of God well he claimed to be the son of God and based in the okay so if someone says hey I'm the son of God and then resurrects their God well uh, given that he is the only one that has been able to do it uh, right, I would let's say, say that's true. Let's say Jesus is the only one that claimed to be God and then resurrected the way he did, as described in the Old and the New Testament. Why would that make him God? And uh, it would make him it would make him God in in the realm of our possibilities. Of course, of course, you are trying to use logic. Of course, you cannot say that this is perhaps some other kind of entity, but in the understanding of our civilization in, in meaning in the first uh, centuries of course in the time of jesus uh this would be understood like a god and why it, but that doesn't seem rational especially given the other data that this world kind of sucks like you wouldn't like what okay so what if a being that like abused children and like engaged in genocide claimed to be god and then died and resurrected in three days, would they be gone? What? Who who did that? No, what if there was such a person? Would they be God still? If they died and resurrected? Yeah, they, they let's say they engage in genocide and they abuse children in all sorts of ways. Okay. Use your imagination. Okay. And then after that, they claim to be God, died, and came back from the dead after three days. Would that would that person be the incarnation of God? I would say so, yes. Is God not good? Mm, not necessarily. If, oh. Particularly the Christian God, 
God is not a, a God of full love. I mean, he gave a set of instructions. I didn't say anything about love. Is he good? Does everything he does he always do the right thing? Mm, I think that right and wrong are concepts of our plane of existence and our morality. And we are just I, okay. So God isn't good on you. God doesn't always do the right thing because there is the right thing isn't is just illusory. Yeah, it's beyond that. He do okay. So when God does God, so God doesn't think that He did the right thing when He created the world. I don't he know just if. Did it. He, yeah, he just did it. I don't know if he sounds was thinking more that, like but... a sounds more more like a machine than a person. Probably. Okay, so God is like a machine. Uh, probably. Probably. Right, that's com- that, I don't see. Then why wouldn't you think God is just physical? Then. Why? Why is not God physical? Yeah, it seems like if it's a, it could be a machine, then it could be physical. It could be completely compatible with naturalism. Well, he became part of the physical world when he came as 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 Jesus Christ. But why wouldn't he be physical prior to? Because you're just you're liking God, you're likening God to a mechanism. I think he was present. I mean, you uh, as I heard you before, you understand the concept of the trinity so he is always in but the you, same you see realm. i understand agents and persons to act on the basis of reasons and by through those reasons they can evaluate whether they're the right thing or the wrong thing but if god does not have any views about what is the right thing or wrong thing to do at a particular moment he doesn't operate on the basis of reasons he just merely behaves and that just matches what i take to be a naturalistic me- mechanism Probably, maybe. Okay, well, your your view is compatible with atheism. I mean, as I understand it, in the sense you have this uh, naturalistic view, like uh, Aristotelic view, in the sense that um, everything is developing around with uh, inherent purpose. Perhaps God functions that way. I mean, what I only uh, try to say is that we have the testimony let's say of the old testament the new testament jesus yeah, but, Christ. but that but at best that just points to evidence of a naturalistic mechanism not a a being that is multi-personal or personal that is all good all knowing and all powerful or anything max anything that has those properties to some significant extent power you know power goodness and knowledge i, I mean, you're just not talking about that so i don't even know it's, you're talking about something that's compatible that something can literally be in principle analyzed in the lab or scientifically. And that's just not what I'm really talking about when I'm talking about God. We have evidence of, of God in that sense. I, I talked to you about the scriptures, which is historical evidence. We have also the Holy sheep that, um, I'm sorry. I just, I feel like you, he was just repeating himself. I'm not going to repeat myself again. This person's connecting. Give me a second. Nope, they're not connecting. Guys, can y'all hear them? I don't know why they're not connecting. What's up? What do you want to talk about? Uh, Amder muted me because he abuses perms. I think that it's more like sincere if you put prove that Abrahamic God exists. Because I mean, under the last guess worldview, you agree that that's pretty standard for God. You agree to the terms. You're just prioritizing the God of Abraham. Um, no, I don't think I'm prioritizing the God of Abraham. I'm fine with, uh, entertaining you know, the point is that he, his, he doesn't think his, his God is a mind or a agent. And at that point, I don't just, what are we talking about? You're talking about the God of Abraham. That's what you want no, people to prove. That's why you have enough. No, no, no. It, but, Odin, right. He's, he's denying the agency of God. Even Odin and Zeus have agency. I don't think that anyone believes that like Odin or Zeus is the independent cause of everything. 
That's like a the God conception of, of God. Right. So you would have to talk about which concept of God you're willing to pay out. Like, uh, we understand the, the number is just to get people to click it, right? We understand that. But what do you mean by God? Basically, an agent that has power over nature and other supernatural entities. Okay. You don't think that clarifying that is important? What do you want me to clarify? What you just said, that it must what necessitate I, a mind. That's just what I take the concept to track. If you're track, if you're talking about something different, then I don't even know what you're talking about, except something that's naturalistic, Very abstract. Good. Hey, because God is just a placeholder for like the initial state or like cause. That's a conception of God. Look, it's like this. Take Atlantis, okay? Suppose, prove Atlantis exists. If someone come up, came up here and says, well, look, have, have you been to the city called Venice? Venice is underwater, right? But that's just, now that's me throwing them out saying that's not what I'm talking about. It's completely justifiable. But nonetheless, there are different conceptions of Atlantis, right? There's, the conception of Atlantis is seen in the Disney movies or whatever. There's the conception of Atlantis is seen in the DC comics, right? That's, and I'm fine with working with... To create, that's why it's important to create contextual categorical differences. Would you think guess, look, guess, would it, I guess did. If you define I Atlantis... If you define Atlantis as a city that's in water or underwater, okay, do you think that that's too thin of a conception? I think to the individual, if you did not clarify. I'm asking um, your, you personally, uh, if I wanted someone to prove Atlantis exists, if all their definition was something like a city underwater is Atlantis, do you think that's too thin of a conception? Well, if you're the one posing the question, it would come down to me asking you, what do you mean by Atlantis? Okay, so if I answer it, your question, then um, you're going to answer mine because you won't answer mine. Yeah, it's your is that, responsibility. Is that what you want me? You want you want me to answer your question before you you ask mine? Because I, I mean, I take Atlantis well, to be some kind of fantastic city that used to be ancient, way before you know, not recorded in history in our textbooks. To be have like basically way, advanced technology or power that um, advanced civilization for its time, you know, um, that somehow was drowned in water and underwater and lost something like that okay now you can correct me maybe i'm missing elements of the of the fantasy there but it's fucking disingenuous to say venice counts as that or that it, new orleans individual. during or that new orleans during hurricane katrina counts as atlantis I mean, it just depends on the context of how you're using words. Okay, so if you, you don't, see how I answered your question? Now, can you answer mine? Here's my question. Would you... Yeah, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have evidence for Atlantis under that I'm not asking for evidence of Atlantis. I'm just asking. If I had prove Atlantis exists and someone shows me a picture of New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina or after Hurricane Katrina, would you see why I want to, would want to throw that person out? Um, if they could be reasonable in articulating... Uh, the correlation between the word Atlantis and what they're explaining, then it would be up to you to explain uh, categorically why Do you th think they're wrong. When people are wondering if Atlantis exists, that they're just simply wondering about whether there's been a city that was at some point not underwater that went underwater. Do I you think, think that can be implied, but yeah, depending it's on like the to think that wait, wait, chart, chart, you can't, you got to be a real person just for a split second, right? You understand that if someone thought New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina's Atlantis, they'd be crazy. Um, right? Yeah, sure. Under, under under how we're using it. Yeah, sure. But if they could express, like, I'm just taking Atlantis to be a city that is underwater. Um, any, any level underwater. Well, then fucking New Orleans was Atlantis for a period of time. To that individual based around the, the semantics they're using, yeah. But the, no one is, that's not what anybody has in mind when they're talking about fucking Atlantis. Oh, we would. That's why I think that it's important to talk about the necessary properties. And so, if you just say, right, I look, believe. They're, look, they're fine. They're necessary. We can talk about that. The point is, is that we can start with the conversation saying, yeah, if you think that New Orleans was Atlantis during Hurricane Katrina, that's fucking stupid. And then we can move on to the necessary and sufficient conditions for Atlantis. Right? Okay, sure. but I didn't, I, yeah, yeah, sure. No problem. But I didn't hear you say to the last okay. guest why you think 
that God necessitates a mind. So I think when people are talking about God, they're talking about an agent that has power over nature or pa- power over nature or anything else supernatural, like angels and shit. But that's not okay? what the, but that's not what the last guest was talking about. Right. He was doing the New Orleans is Atlantis kind of shit. No, because you are okay. Is there multiple ways of like using Atlantis in just like a general sense, or do me and you, you understand? You can use the term no. Atlantis to refer to Venice, but that is not interesting. That is not what people are thinking about. No, 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 no. That's not that's not my question. No, no, that's not my question. Right? What's your question? How people Be very genu- clear. Yeah. How, how, okay, so how people generally use Atlantis is one way, right? But how people generally use God, right? There's a plethora of, of different categories. No, I have a general, I have, God, I think people, God. generally people, when they're talking about the existence of God or gods, they're talking about an agent that has power over nature and other supernatural entities. What other, so that can, than, other than that, that I that don't include, really. That can include the universe. People literally call is the, the universe, universe nature? God all the, is the universe nature? Uh, I think so. Okay. So then does God have power over the universe? How what, how, what what does that make sense? The universe has power of itself. Yeah, I think that aligns uh, with even it, the Abraham. I wouldn't guy. waste my time with this person. Well, that's why I think that the categorical differences for what do you mean by God is important to the conversation. No, it's not important. Look, what would be important is to throw that person out. Because, I mean, not, because they're not tracking what most people have in mind when they're using the term God, which is I'm using a very I'm using a definition that's compatible with saying Poseidon is God. Odin is God, right? I'm I'm using a very I, I you know the the the, the conception is thin enough by which we're not just trapped in Western philosophy, okay? And so I will I I want to I do want to respect the fact that I'm coming from a Western background and I am foisting a certain conception, right? So if someone wanted to prove um, Odin's existence, right? I mean that would fit the topic I think more or less. Although you know people like Graham Oppie distinguish between capital G God and little G God, okay? But even yeah, that, I think, I think Odin would be a, a lowercase G God, right? Yeah. So I'm fine. Yeah. But but the thing is that there be there's that's way more genuine than saying that you know the universe is God to me. Oh yeah. Whenever I think of like capital G God, I'm just talking about like the initial cause. Like that's really all I'm looking for, right? So I wouldn't I wouldn't hold Odin, Poseidon, Thor because these are lowercase Gs, right? But when it comes to like capital G, I don't know why this necessitates a mind or not. And that's why you think I think causal fin- so would causal finitism when you say initial cause, do you mean the first cause or do you mean a sustaining cause or do you mean both? Um an uh, an independent cause. By independent means uncaused cause? Yeah, I'll accept uncaused cause. Yeah. If it, it and if you're I mean sustaining cause might complicate things, but look, I don't think causal finitism implies theism. So if you're if, if one were to think that God is just the first cause um, and it doesn't have a cause, you know, because it's the first cause, there's no other cause to it, um, then causal finicism would be a straight you, – you'd straight – you'd jump right into theism. But, but that's not – again, yeah, it's not, just not what you people – you might, you might be able to jump into deism though. But yeah, yeah I appreciate you letting me come up. I just uh, wanted to join because Amder abused his perms and muted me when I didn't say anything. Look, um, right. Am- but, yeah. If Amder did something wrong, I cannot punish him because he's a child of mine. But, well, I mean, he's a child in general, so it's all good, man. Don't worry about it. Um, I right. appreciate you. I love you, Danny. Take Bye. Care, See ya. Sorry. What's up, King? So there are laws of nature set in place, and the laws of nature are a scientific term, but they are also a term given by scientists by observing what God had set forth. And scientists, they observe something in existence, and they compare it to the Bible And they have never found a fault in the Bible ever. You want to know why? Because it is the book of God. Every word is the word of God. And the word of God spoke everything into creation. Okay. Uh, First question is, um, how much have you had to drink tonight? I don't drink. 
at all. Yeah. I don't talk to liars. Sorry. What's up? Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing just fine. What do you want to talk about? Well, I, I wanted to pick up uh, where I think you had a previous guest. Yeah. About the concepts of God. So, you know, the fact of the matter is across various philosophers, theologians, there are many concepts of God. So, this what is Dr. You, Khalil. Yes, it is. <clears throat> nice of you to be on the show. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, what you define as God, uh, maybe you define God as some unembodied mind that has supernatural powers, whatever. Uh, that will cohere with some concepts of God, but many other important philosophers, theologians, they don't conceive God in that way. So mm -hmm. what, how would you deal with that? Like, what, what did you take my definition of God to be? Because it wasn't, un, it wasn't unembodied. Uh, no, actually, I don't think it, you're right. I don't think you said unembodied. Yeah, uh, I, I think, just mean like an agent, a mind that has power over nature. What is an agent? Kind of, something that acts on the basis of reasons that can that has commitments that those commitments guide the behavior of. Sorry, whatever. commitments, commitments to who or what? Beliefs and desires. Those are commitments. beliefs. So okay, so something that acts like for final causes. I, I don't use that language, but you're on the right track. Yeah, like like an agent acts for an end, right? Agents, rational agents, typically have some goal. Yeah. Right. They want to achieve, and then they go about taking certain actions to achieve that goal or outcome or end. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So that's fine. Uh, I would simply say that for many classical theists, that that would not cohere as a concept of God. Do classical theists th think that God have a will? Uh, yes, they would attribute will to God, but they would not attribute a uh, desire to God, or they would never say that God acts for an end. Okay. Well, I'm fine with not because I think this is merely terminological, but the point is, is that on my view, a will is the will is guiding the behavior of God or his actions, right? No. So in this case, for classical theists, uh, the will of God is just a, a term we use to describe uh, divine action. Okay. So for example, uh, what is an create... action here in this case? action divine action here would basically refer to like the fact that god brings about some state of affairs okay so, but presumably it's creation. intentionally right because what i what i mean by like i agree that desire is a very broad notion but the point is that when god acts versus when let's say a hurricane behaves okay mm -hmm. the difference is that one is and there's an intention in one case there's, a, there's not an intention in the other and intentions are rules by which you can evaluate the behavior such that you can say it's succeeding or failing in what it's doing. Yeah, but but again, here, uh, if you if it, your sense of intention would not apply to God. I well, what are your I'm fine, but, but I'm fine with using your sense of intention, but the point is, that is I mean, are you rejecting the, the sense of intention that is used to evaluate success or failure? Yeah, because there's no what, how, what place does success or failure have here? Okay, so God created the universe. That's intentional, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, and so the fact that the universe was created, there was success only because that was what was intended for. Okay, but again, here, uh, intention is what we're we're using the term intention to simply describe the state of the god bringing about a state of affairs now but hurricanes bring about state of affairs but there's a difference right they don't have intention well right? there's not the, the the difference between god and a hurricane is that god is an independent self-sufficient reality whereas hurricanes are not well, look i know the difference between hurricanes tornadoes earthquakes gods me that i'm not yeah but that's the fundamental difference but, but the, the difference I, between god and all these natural the relevant phenomenon. the relevant difference for me in this case is that when um, a boulder ro runs, uh, rolls down a hill, when there's a tornado, um, when plate tectonics move, there's not a norm or an intention by which you can say that something that that the effect is in accord with what it intended for. Okay, so again, in this case, though, the relevant difference 
is that God bringing about a state of affairs, the, the only cause of that state of affairs is God himself. Whereas a hurricane or any natural phenomena is just the effect of various other causes or conditions. And I was saying that so long as when you say God does it, like there's that the intention of God is explanatorily relevant. No, in classical theism, what you're referring to as the intention of God is just God himself. It's not some additional. Okay, factor. fine, fine. Okay, but then then that would mean that it's expl- if God is explanatorily relevant and God is yeah. identical to this intention, then the intention yeah. is explanatorily relevant. Yes, but in this, that's fine. If, but in this case, in classical theism, the divine intention is ontologically identical to God. I'm not, I not never disputed that. But I, I, all I said was that the intention is explanatorily relevant. Then you said no, because the intention is identical to God. But what I said was, in fact, compatible compatible with the view, with your view that the intention is explanatorily relevant so if 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 you if you think what i said is compatible with your view that's fine okay right? great but then in, what what will happen here is again in classical theism right because god's intention is identical to god right it's known as divine simplicity okay, I, i'm not gonna fight not, with you on that i'm not, I'm not well, I'm, that's not well, the purpose it's here. not a, but we're, no i agree so this is not a fight i'm simply presenting uh, a notion of God, which okay, I don't but know that notion whether... of God is compatible with the very broad sense of God that I've offered. In it fact, I, be, I would, but... I would look. Obviously, there's senses of God that are not compatible with the concept of God that I've laid out. But at that point, I'm making a practical objection. I'm saying that that is just that confuses the dialectic if you were to deviate from the broad conception of god that i've offered so would but zeus be like like yes. when you say proof would zeus count yes odin yes. thanos yes well thanos okay. is you know Th- thanos is tricky but I, would I think superman would. count probably superman has not. power over nature. no but superman has power over nature well we have nature. power over nature the, the the point is there's a and i think i did a briefly because look when i lift a rock i have power over something natural i think yeah, it, that needs to be explored exactly what I mean by power over nature. But Superman presumably is not violating laws of physics or nature, right? I mean, you could explain the DC universe, even the Marvel universe, in terms of laws of nature. I think that what people, when people have in God, God in mind, though, is that there's some kind of there's some kind of hierarchy between there's a division of powers, right? There's the powers within nature, and then there's the powers above nature that could. Yeah. Could alter those powers or the right. The so, but Zeus, so certain other deities, though Zeus and whatever, they're actually still within nature. They they have mm-hmm. power over certain laws, but not all laws. That's the thing. Yeah, right? I mean, look, Poseidon has power over water. Zeus yeah, has the power of the storms, over. right? Yeah, I, yeah. You know, the, the, it's true but that I that would need to I, be I think, dissected. But yeah, point- I just think there's a conflation when 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 you count those. But if you like, you count Zeus as God or whatever, but not Superman, because um, the only difference between them is in like the degrees of their. Well, Superman no, I, well, I think the difference is going to be in how we're thinking about the natural laws and how they relate to those entities. So, for me, it's going to be very hard to distinct. I mean, also, there's an element of worship too that that's very hard to detach from God. Although I think you can have gods that are not worthy of worship, um, but the, the and I think that's what's. The, the the intuitions there is that like Superman is not worshipped in the way that Zeus was, uh, but but the way that I think I understand like the difference between Zeus and Superman is how I'm how I can explain the the causal connections in both cases, right? So in Superman, like I could in principle explain everything in terms of like the natural order, right? Like. The, the the way that the sunlight you know allows him to recharge or whatever like a, a lot of that is we you don't have to invoke supernatural explanations right now um maybe my definition is over it's a, a relying on this distinction between supernatural and non-natural natural and i would agree if someone were to criticize that that distinction is um not to be relied upon then maybe i need to rethink my definition but nonetheless i think what all i'm trying to say is that if you go to the average person, right? They're they're going to accept some, especially people that believe in God. They're going to accept that kind of dichotomy, 
and um, and they're going to think of the agents that are sort of outside of the natural order as being, you know, more in the category of a god. Yeah, uh, they, they sure will, and 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 generally speaking, uh, the little g notion of god, mm -hmm. right, would would be anything that has some sort of you know unusual powers. But again, you know, this very much changes with time, right? So today uh, it, it, we live in what Charles Taylor calls the disenchanted universe, right? A disenchanted world. So perhaps many more things may count as a small G God today, whereas maybe 500 years ago they would not, right? So if your understanding of the cosmos includes certain spiritual telepathy, and if that's part of your worldview, if those are part of the laws, then a saint uh, is not a small G God. They're just part of this cosmos. Whereas today, if you have a very materialist notion of cosmos and laws, uh, what medieval people call a saint, you know, you could call a small G God. But anyway, that, 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 that's a whole Well, let thing. me make one um, more comment. There, yeah. There's, because part of the, you came in, you wanted to follow up on a conversation I had. I offered a general concept of God that I think tracks with what, what people might be thinking or, or at least saying. I, I think that, like, I give the criticism of the distinction between supernatural and natural. That might be, maybe we shouldn't rely on that. But then that means that the general population would probably need to revise how they're thinking about God. The, I, I, would have crit, I would have your similar criticisms that, like, it's very hard to distinguish between an, a very powerful alien and a little g-god or whatever, right? Um, so, but, but the context of the previous conversation is that is there... What are people talking about generally, and um, can we can we have a general definition of God such that we can use as a standard to say you're changing the subject, or uh, it's not really worth talking to you if you're if this is your conception of God because it doesn't even remotely fit what the general con concept or general usage of the term is. I think that's that was the background there. Yeah, no, I heard part uh, again. I heard you, I think you were discussing with a Christian. I sort of missed some of it. So you told him that what he said about God sounded more like nature, but I wasn't clear. I think I missed it. I wasn't clear on what he said uh, that you labeled uh, as sort of like, oh, this well, doesn't count. He didn't think God was an agent. Um, and God was, he said that God is more like a mechanism. In fact, I think at some point he said, that, yeah, it, it, it's just probably a mechanism. In which case, because, you know, here there's this distinction in my mind between agency and mechanism and if it's a mechanism we're really talking about something that the, the the causal connections are governed by like a set of laws and that's how i am understanding nature in this context so that seems to be compatible with naturalism but you know could you have theism on naturalism depends on how you're construing it goes back to the to our our, our general approach to the concept of god but i i just don't i don't think it's uh, I think it's more like the Atlantis. Did you catch what the I said about the Atlantis case? I, I did. I mm -hmm. did catch that, but I, I I couldn't really tell how that was relevant to this because in that case, uh, you you guys were talking about like one attribute of Atlantis, i.e., being underwater, right? Uh, and being underwater, it may be a necessary attribute of Atlantis, but obviously, it's not a sufficient attribute, right? Because right. Being underwater could be shared. It's a shared attribute. There are many but, things underwater. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so, I, but in, in this case, in what we're talking about now, right? Uh, so when you say prove God exists, uh, so I was thinking, though, aren't you really asking for proof of a necessary being or unconditioned reality? Not necessarily. But I mean, I'm, that's that my... would not count as God. That would count, like, but I'm not. People have people are willing to prove a, a a type of God that's not necessary, and I'm willing but, to entertain. But this. here's the thing: yeah, I could come tomorrow somehow, uh, and I do some crazy stuff, and I prove to you some entity that's like Zeus or Thanos or something, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it has all this power. You know, maybe I have some films to show you, but that alone showing that there's a thanos type entity right that would only prove a supernatural entity uh it would not prove that this thanos like entity 
is an independent uncaused reality. Uh, sure, but look, so, uh, the point so is like, that I don't think... How would that think, meet God? Look, how would that even meet the requirement? Look, the point is is that I don't think a per If someone wants to come up here, a polytheist, right, that wants to prove the Greek pantheon to me, I don't really... I, I think it would be disingenuous of me to say that they're changing the subject. Right? Whereas no, that's fine. That's like okay. you being kind. You're just being kind to, to people. Yeah. But, but so, but as far as I'm concerned, right, a big G God, mm -hmm. at minimum, must be a self-sufficient, uncaused, unconditioned reality. Yeah. I, to, to, what I would say is that that's a conception of God that's used in, in largely in the West, and and of course, you know, I I don't know if you consider Islam to be the West, but probably not. Um, the and well, yeah, and that, in that, the East too, and in the East, we have this in Hinduism. The Buddhists, although they're called atheists, they, they have a notion of an unconditioned reality as well. Okay, but the, the, the point have it and so on. Yeah, the point is that I, I take that to be a variant of the concept of God. Meaning, so I want to, and I'm taking I'm taking this from Graham Oppie, right? That there's the concept of God is broadly construed, and then there's various conceptions, and the yeah, conception I, the conception that I like to talk about is very your conception because I think that's more engaging with the tradition you know more enga engaging with philosophy or philosophical inquiry more than you know claims about zeus i think claims about zeus are largely empirical questions i don't yeah. think there's very much for the philosopher to talk about when you're if you're but i'm, I'm willing to, i just don't think they're necessarily changing the subject right i i think it's very different when they say when they say well the nature is god well then that i feel like that's a change of subject uh uh, that that's fine um so what then is like where do you again I, I don't really know much about you so where do you stand on we don't have to call it god but where do you stand on the notion of an unconditioned reality or necessary being are you agnostic around it or atheist on it well i i'm sort of skeptical of the sort of modalities are used that are used to used to describe those initial states or beings or whatever um you know people had this in mind a metaphysical modality there as distinct from physical and logical and that modality is like sort of elusive for me so so the answer to your questions i don't believe that anything is metaphysically necessary um if if that if that's a kind of intermediate modality between physical and logical uh what about the what about whether something is dependent or independent and by dependent and independent i usually use those terms to mean like explained by or not explained at all well it, it something that is dependent is anything whose existence or or occurrence right uh is conditional on some prior condition mm -hmm. that sounds like an okay. explanat an, an explanatory relation to me it, it could be a, a, or or you could call it a grounding relation okay so certain things are grounded by other things uh, by mm -hmm. cer certain things only exist if there are grounding conditions that obtain right sure. yeah i, 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 I take those a, relations to be explanatory as well sure. relations okay so i would call that uh, a dependent reality okay a anything that has grounding conditions is a dependent reality and of course this is not if you've read the literature on grounding and maybe you have maybe you haven't but grounding is not a, a temporal event, right? Mm -hmm. So something that exists, that. yeah. So something that exists right now, right? The grounding conditions have to obtain right now. It's not just some past moment. So I'm not talking in like this Kalam sense. I understand. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the basic argument that you find from Avicenna, Ibn Sina, as well as many Islamic philosophers, as well as Christian philosophers is that uh, it is logically impossible that everything is dependent. That everything is, by everything, like, like okay, so... Everything in reality. So it might be that the set of all facts, contingent facts, are not explained. Is that... No, no. That you're talking at a different... You're talking about, like, proposition and stuff. Yeah, I, no, not necessarily. I could say contingent things. It, it, talking about facts is different than talking about entities. Fine, but the point right. is, is that I think that contingent things are understood to be contingent because of the propositions, 
the modality of the propositions that describe them or that the no propositions are second order to actual I, I, the, the point is, is that the way that i understand a contingent but, thing is in yeah. virtue of the descriptions the modality of the descriptions of that thing okay i would reverse it our descriptions of a thing are based on the status or the state or the situation. I don't see it that way, but I don't think it won't matter. It won't matter either way. The I'm just cause, saying that the, the cause of my description of water being a contingent fact is the water itself. It's the fact that water is dependent and grounded. So water exists. The reason, well, if someone were to say water is a contingent thing, right? The reason why I would think yeah. that water is contingent. Yeah. Right. And of course, the different you're using, we're using contingent to mean dependent here. But yeah, I'm um, talking about dependence. That's what I said at the beginning. I was talking about grounding dependence. Right. Now, mm -hmm. now that's an that's a, 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 a an ontological situation. Right. Then on top of that, we have propositional descriptions. Yeah. So look, all I'm saying is that if you take about the set facts being contingent. All I'm saying is that if you take the set of contingent stuff, whether it be propositions, facts, states of affairs, events, things, objects, yep. whatever, right? Um, I'm comfortable with saying that that set is going to be not, not going to be, there might not be an explanation. In fact, I'm, it's very likely that there isn't an explanation there uh, on, on the pain of modal collapse. Well, again, you see, uh, <laughs> this is where there's a confusion. Um, you can have a modal collapse within broad logical necessity, which I, for one, actually hold to. Mm -hmm. But that you don't have a modal collapse when it comes to what is dependent versus what is independent. Okay, but when you say dependent and independent, I, I don't know if we agreed on this. Do you mean explained and not explained? I mean, I think I, I said earlier uh, that something is dependent if it's grounded. That's an explanatory relation, right? Sure. Okay. You want to say that? That's fine. Because I don't, there are, are many, no, I have, I'm not well read on the grounding literature. I think grounding relations might, for me, when I use the term grounding, I'm usually saying, hey, if this stuff doesn't exist, then these facts wouldn't be true or this thing wouldn't exist. Yeah. Something but, but, like that. Yeah. But, well, it's the second thing, right? It's if, if, if uh, X does not exist, then Y cannot exist. Okay. Yeah. That's and a and grounding me, relation. Uh, and I mean, you can check the literature. It's, I, I'm I think I'm presenting it accurately. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying well, is, there's, it's, it's really broad, right? Like I know that that's one conception of ground, one type of grounding relation, right? Yeah. I mean, sure. But within grounding, if, if you think grounding relations are a family of relations, right? One of the members of the family is the existence of X right? Being dependent on the existence of Y. Mm -hmm. So X and, is dependent. Right. That, I'm fine with that. I'm just saying that that's yeah. not, that doesn't exhaust all grounding relations as far as I understand. No, um, but it's a kind of, it's within grounding. Right. Ground but is that the one, one that we're working that, with? Are we going to just work with that one that everything has a ground? Yeah. Or, so what I'm, what, what I'm saying is the, the Islamic contingency argument is not an argument about, uh, necessary facts versus contingent facts. I understand that. Uh, from an Islamic philosophical perspective, everything is necessary in terms of fact. Everything okay. that is is a necessary fact, actually. By necessary so, fact, you just mean something that exists that has no grounding. No. So now, because you brought up modal collapse. So when, when you said there's a pain of modal collapse, uh, what you're saying is we end up in a situation where all facts are modally necessary. That is, uh, they obtain in all possible worlds. Sure. That's yeah, but uh, but we clarified what what relation we're talking about because earlier I interpreted grounding or sorry, independent dependent as just ex, you know explanatory uh, relations. Apparently, you're fine with. Presumably, you think there are other explanatory relations that are non grounding, right? Um, sure. Sure. We can have uh, expl and, explanation is a pretty big family of things. Right. right? So we're just specifically talking about, about a type so, of explanatory relation. Yeah. Is, so within within explanations, right? Within within this family of we call grounding. Okay. Uh, what you have is the fact that existence of X is the necessary sufficient condition for the existence of Y. Okay. Okay. Right? So and that would mean Y is dependent on X. Okay. Right. So okay. most people would agree that these 
types of dependent things that I just described, they, they exist. Some, some of these. Exist. Yeah, there, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm yeah. fine with thing that there are dependent things or things yeah, that- like I know I'm you... a dependent thing right now. Like, you know, my exi the existence of my living body uh, is grounded in various conditions, some of which are internal to my body and some of which are external to my body, like the temperature of the room, the air pressure in the room, um, you know, all, all sorts of things in the environment and as well as things about my body itself, like internal organs, tissues, right? So that's what I mean by dependent reality. So the I, argument, okay. yeah. So, so the, the basic argument here then that Islamic philosophers give is that if you generalize the situation of dependence and you ask the broader question, can every thing in reality be dependent mm -hmm. in this way and they argue that it is logically impossible that every reality is dependent it or i'll put it in a different term like it's logically impossible that everything in reality uh, requires a prior necessary sufficient condition for its existence Okay. So what do you what, what do you think about that? Would well, you agree or do you... uh, uh, so first of all, we're talking about one explanatory relation. Um, it could be that nothing is um, that we can't. We, we might say that there are some independent things, but don't have you know. Uh, there might be other relevant e explanatory relations that might we might think about it um, in terms of thinking of it as dependent or independent. But the if we're just looking at this, then I, I mean, I would want an argument for why there can't be an, an infinite regressive grounding. But suppose um, that are you, you give an argument and that shows that there can't there um, there can't be an infinite regressive of grounding relations. Um, why? What? What does it have to do? Okay, so that means there is something that is ungrounded that grounds everything else. Yeah. Well, why would I think that that is God? If, if, is, that, is that just what is meant by God? Uh, for starters, yeah. That, that is what Avicenna's necessary existence is. An independent, ungrounded reality. Okay, but necessary here just means that it's not grounded by anything else, but it grounds other stuff. Or Yeah, necessary here means independent, right? Its existence or occurrence does not depend on any prior conditions. But you understand, just so to clarify, this sense of necessity is compatible with it not existing in other possible worlds. Uh, actually, it's not compatible. Wait, okay, now, because necessary means independent. Independent means yeah. that it's, um, it, it's ungrounded, but grounds everything else. Where do you get from there that uh -huh. it has to exist? So if this necessary being is independent, there's no cause for its existence. Okay. There's no. Okay. Fine. Let's just say that's right. true, because remember. Yeah. I, but let me let me just go over the project here. You have to give me an argument for why the that which is ungrounded that grounds everything else in this world is yeah. the thing that grounds everything else in all possible worlds. That seems like a very difficult task. No, I, I mean it's not difficult okay. at all. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So once you have an independent reality, a reality whose existence uh, is completely uncaused. Okay. And there's no ontological explanation for this reality then, because it's independent. Okay. It can't be explained in terms of any other reality because it's an independent reality. Any other thing in the world that we're in? No. It. It. Well, what, like, what do you mean in the world that we're in? The world that we're in refers to what? You're. This is just you're, when you we're say talking world, about, we're talking about this world as opposed to another possible world, right? In this world. You want to say that there is um, an ungrounded thing that grounds all others. Okay, let's say, fine. But that doesn't get you to saying that, that, that whatever that refers to, yeah. right, whatever the referent of that, of that description is, um, carries over to other possible worlds. And that's just precisely Wait, what I mean what, by what saying are that. You, can... what, when you say other possible worlds, now, what do you mean by that? Now, it sounds like you are doing, um, I forgot who's the thinker who believes in, uh, like, an actualist. Like you believe that there are other possible worlds. Well, the way I mean, if you're not Where comfortable you with possible, if you're if you're not comfortable with possible world semantics, 
I'm talking about something like the way things could have been. Right? Sure, sure. Okay, so, so if you put okay. it in those terms, so an independent reality is a reality whose existence is completely uncaused. Okay, okay. Right? Do you, I, I already really, I have yeah. that, but what does that yeah. look? Do you think when you say so, that? Okay, so this if, is a, wait, so, wait, one so second. Then, just one second. One second. Clear. Sure. You think that this had to miss this had to exist that this could have not existed, right? Okay, the pen. Yeah. Could this could this cease to could this yeah, yeah, not yeah, exist okay, another? So, sure. Sure. Okay. So could this have not that. existed? That's what I'm looking for. Okay. So this pen, and this goes for you and me. We are dependent realities. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a dependent reality can only exist if its causes obtain. Okay. When you say only exist, there you're using yes. a, you're using a modal term, but right. A dependent reality, something that exists right now that is dependent on other things. What it, what accounts for its existence? It's because all of its causes necessitate its existence. That's why your pen exists right now. Okay, if but your pen, if you consider some other possible world and the pen, this pen does not exist, the, wait, there's a reason you, so you for know, why. Do you know what I mean? Exist. You're using possible world semantics now. Are you comfortable with using possible world semantics or no? No, I have no problem with the semantics, but the way you were speaking, it sounded like it was more than semantic. It sounded like you ontologically are committed. To why would you think that? I, I didn't know because, how you got because, that. Because of the way you were speaking, but that's fine if you're not. Okay, so then then we could rewind, right? The, the point is, is that you have to show that the ungrounded ground of all things that's uncaused yeah. uh, exists in all possible worlds. Yeah. Why I'm would I be committed to that? Yeah, I'm, ab I'm about to go there. Okay, go So a, when a dependent reality exists in this possible world, like your pen, it's because all the, the it's because the complete causes of the pen exist. Okay. Oh, okay. And if the pen does not exist, your your little ballpoint pen there, if that pen in some other possible world, again using the semantics, in the possible world where this pen does not exist, there's a reason for that too. Right? The reason being that the causes of this pen did not obtain in that possible world. Okay, okay? so but but what I'm trying to point out is so that the fine. cause explains why the the, the dependent reality obtains in one possible world and the absence of the cause explains why it didn't obtain in the other possible world but, but here's what i'm saying right that fine there's a ground for all for all things uh, that's not that's ungrounded uncaused that explains why this pin here what i'm trying to say is that there's another possible world where this pin exists and because there's once again an ungrounded um an ungrounded grounder right mm -hmm. um but that but that but the referent of that description isn't the same referent as the description that's used in that in this world, and so they can, in other words, you could even. So you're saying there's another ungrounded ground in the other a different one. World? Yeah, just a different one. Just I mean, it's almost as okay. simple as saying, I, if I created this pin, okay, yeah. there's a sense of grounding relation there. Okay, but what's the difference? What's the difference? Okay, so there. Let me get to. to uh, let me answer to what you want me to answer. Now, okay, so why does the ungrounded ground exists in all possible worlds. Okay. That so specific we, one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. Let me get there. All right. So let's assume uh, uh, you said if there's an argument for why everything cannot be dependent, right? It would it would yield the conclusion that there is an ungrounded ground in this possible world. Right? Mm -hmm. We're on that. Okay. So uh this oh, wait, before argument, you move on, I'm gonna I just quick I, how long do you have? Like, how much time uh, do you well, have? I should be writing a, a, a journal article right now, but I'm on TikTok. So, okay, because I, I do have something, but I want to give us enough time to, to, to wrap this up. You're always welcome to come back. Would you want to give it like yeah, 15 no. minutes? Sure, no okay. problem. Okay, and we, we may just have to say, oh, rain check, you know. Yeah, that's I fine. Know I, I know who you that's are. Fine. We've talked before, Khalil, but I guess I'm, I'm sort of offended that you don't remember me. But, bro, you have to help me out. When have we talked? I, I, it was years ago. It was on Clubhouse. I, I'm joking. You oh, okay. Well, if it was Club, see. Yeah, you, I know. I know. I, I well, you were probably not under your real name or something. I was, but um, but it's, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, okay. So 
this argument that I, that, look, I haven't really given the argument. So, you know, I'll have to send you something. I I've, I've have four reasons why everything in reality uh, cannot be dependent, okay? Uh, including the, the regress. You, you can't have- I wanna internet. grant that for sake of argument. I okay, think so we, let's grant it for just, mm -hmm. just for short. Okay. I, obviously I owe you an argument and, and, and I'll give it to you at some point mm -hmm. um, or I'll send it to you. Okay, so grant me that, okay? So the same logic that yields this argument in this possible world applies in all possible worlds. Sure. Okay, so in all possible worlds, there's an ungrounded ground. Sure. Okay. So then your question is, right? How are, like, how are you seem to be asking now, how do I know that the ungrounded ground in this possible world is the same? Yeah, so as look the at this one? picture. Look at this picture. Yeah. yeah I see these it. represent, these three categories are three different possible worlds, right? Sure. So each of them have, um, an ungrounded ground of everything, right? And okay. you know, there's the the chain, okay? okay, the hierarchies. But this one, it's they're all different reference. One's a circle, one's a square, sure. and these are very. So the thing is, is that presumably God had yeah. it, in your mind, it, it's reference fixing. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. so, but 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 here, the 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 definite description, the ground of everything, have yeah. a variety of reference. So I just was wondering, why is how are you ruling this out? Yeah, no, no problem. Okay, okay. Okay. So I, I can think of like two, two, I'm just doing this on the spot. Um, I can think of sort of two paths to the the desired conclusion. Okay. So the first one would be, okay, let us just uh, for the sake of argument say that these are like three different uh, ungrounded realities. Okay. Like they're all different, like, like what you, you, you wrote there. Okay. So they're all different. Okay, so we have an ungrounded reality in world A, this world, right? But it doesn't exist in world B. A different one yeah. exists. Yeah, but, but the one in this world doesn't exist in world B, right? That would be the situation. Exactly. Now, here's the issue. If something is ungrounded, its existence doesn't depend on anything. And likewise, right, if you posit its non-existence, then there would have to be an explanation for its non-existence. Why, wait, wait, why okay, so wait, wait, let me, let me write what you, I'm trying to get your view. You said its existence yeah. doesn't depend on anything, but that's just, so yeah. that's just to repeat that it's ungrounded. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So right. it's ungrounded, so but why is exists, it? So, so if it, if it, if this thing exists in this world, but it fails to exist in the next world, mm -hmm. why? Oh, I don't know. There's only the only explanation. The, the point is possible. No, so here's I'm going to say it's impossible for it not to exist in the next world, right? And here's why: if the the unconditioned reality of this world fails to obtain in the next world, okay? Okay. The the explanation there has to be an explanation for why it fails to exist in the next world. So I don't either. See Either it's so, so let's, let's think about it. If something fails to exist. Well, look, I agree with you, right? Wait, yeah, wait, so, let, me so let, let, let me break it down. Either it's impossible. So, so work with me here. I'm the listening. unconditioned reality of this world in world A, it exists. Okay. It does not exist in world B. And by the way, I'm just making this up on the spot. This might not even work. I'm just, I'm just. Well, can I put together what I think you're about to do or no? Yeah. Okay, well, well I think let me try to do it and then you can comment. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so unconditioned reality A fails to exist in world B. Now, if something fails to exist in a possible world, it's either going to be impossible, like a square circle, right? Or it's going to be possible in itself, but fail to obtain. Okay. okay. Now, is this unconditioned reality impossible? No, because it exists in, in the first possible world. It can't be like a married bachelor or square right. circle. I, that's so right. It can't be impossible. Okay. Option number two is that the unconditioned reality is merely possible. Right. Okay? But when, a, when something that's merely possible 
something that's possible in itself, it may exist or it may not exist. Okay. That's right. If it does exist, it's because its causes obtain. And if it fails to exist, it's because its causes fail to obtain. Okay, but I we're said here that about water earlier. I'm just doing saying the same thing about if, our if, if, it, if it fails to exist, it's because, but this thing has no cause, right? A, exactly my point. So you see, unconditioned reality A, which we are claiming does not exist in the next world. Okay, we're claiming it doesn't exist. It's not it, it it's not an impossible thing like a squared circle, but it's not a possible thing either. So the only option is that it's a necessary thing, and it in fact does exist in world B. Okay, but that's exactly what I think is in question, right? Because I agree. No, I, but I, I, it is in question. It is. But what I've done is I've reduced the situation of our unconditioned reality to three options. It's either impossible or it's possible or it's necessary. Yeah, but and by I've showing explained, this, by, yeah. by I'm showing this, I'm just asking you to rule out this possibility to show so that. That's what say, I'm doing. Okay, I just okay. ruled out that it's impossible. Sure. And I've also ruled out that it's possible in itself. Because whatever is possible in itself, in order to exist, requires a cause. But unconditioned reality A, by definition, does not require a cause. So unconditioned reality A is not merely possible, nor is it impossible. Therefore, it must be necessary, and therefore it does exist in that next world. Right, but you have to show why it's necessary. I just did. If, if I have... If it's, only... uh, fine, it's not impossible, therefore it's possible. So it's either possible or necessary. Yeah, but, but then it's you're not really possible. Not... Oh, right, it's not. It, it's necessary, thus not just not merely possible. But that, yeah. I'm not seeing how you're you're saying getting there. I, I, okay, so I'm gonna try it again. We know that some reality A is independent and ungrounded. That's our starting point. Okay, we are assuming that ungrounded reality A exists in possible world A, but it doesn't exist in possible world B. Okay. Now, when something fails to exist in a possible world, okay, mm -hmm. there's only two reasons for failing to exist. Number one, it is impossible in itself. Okay. It's a logically, logically contradictory notion, like a married bachelor, square circle, whatever. Okay. That's one reason why something doesn't exist, okay? It's impossible in itself. Or that it's contingent. The second reason is that something fails to exist in a possible world because it's possible in itself okay but its causes fail to obtain and bring it about both of those options are false for our unconditioned reality a therefore okay. the only conclusion is that it's necessary in all possible worlds yeah so i think part of the, part of the difficulty here okay is that we're working with one kind of independent dependent relation, which is the grounding relation. There yes. are other explanatory relations. Now you brought in causal, the causal type of explanatory relation. And you're saying that if something ceases to exist, it can only be because, and if it's not impossible, it could only be because the necessary and sufficient conditions for the cause that, you know, the, the cause. You don't doesn't have to call it a cause. You don't have to call it a cause. The point is, if something fails to exist in a possible world, it's because it's the necessary and sufficient conditions for that thing fail to obtain in that possible world. That's but that might be so that might be so trivial, right? Basically, but, but it doesn't matter if it's trivial. It's a relevant fact to your inquiry. That's like saying because this unconditioned reality, by definition, doesn't have any necessary sufficient conditions. It doesn't have that. So the, its non-existence, its hypothetical non-existence in the next possible world cannot be due to the case that its necessary sufficient conditions fail to obtain. It's also not impossible. Therefore, it must be necessary and it must actually exist in that possible world. Yeah, but it also, I mean, fine. There's like, you're, you're, it sounds like to me, you're just saying that if it failed to exist, the stuff that's necessary for it to exist, it wasn't there, those conditions didn't exist. But right. there could be okay, yeah, yes, so, but that so, doesn't mean therefore, so, okay. So, so let's so are you gonna go that are you gonna say that in in our world, this reality is independent, but in the next world, it's a dependent reality? 
Is that what you're going to say? Well, now it seems like you're equivocating on independent and dependent. No, I, I know, my friend. Is I independent and dependent just... grounding? Yes. Okay, but yeah. look, I'm just saying that they're, they're going to have two worlds. We have different ungrounded groundings of everything, right? They have distinct essential properties. But the and, thing and is... Just say, so what I'm trying to basically show is that the fact that a reality is independent, that's, that, that's, this independence is not, you know, independence uh, is not some extrinsic, you know, uh, attribute of something that something has is independent in one world and then the other world is dependent. That's Another not world may not exist. No. Okay. Do you think something, A, can be dependent in one world and independent in another world? I, I see no strict bar for that. So, so then yeah, we're, so we're not, be, I would say, I would say that's impossible. We're not talking about the same thing. So like something in, is, uh, you have an, uh, an ungrounded reality in this world, in the other world, it's grounded. It, it, it's not ungrounded, but it's grounded. You think those are the same thing. I'm saying they can't be the same thing. I, the, the, yeah, I, well, why not? I mean, because it's sort of like it's sort of like to me it's like let me difference. let me let me let me try to explain it's sort of for me it's sort of like this and maybe i am misunderstanding your grounding relation but it's sort of like if a red billiard ball hits a blue one it's a green one well could you have a possible world where it's reversed where the green one hits the blue one it's the red one i mean they're they're all they, they have in 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 each yeah but, in no, the first but that's a very, world, I, these are events now i'm not talking about an event right i'm not talking about an ungrounded event or yeah happening. well okay or, we can talk right. about concurrent causes. i'm talking about an un I'm talking about an ungrounded entity, an ungrounded reality. I understand there's reality. a distinction between the like you know events that are in time and then the kind of grounding relation we're talking about. Yeah, so, you know, so but but the, the point is, is that the order the of the, the 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 order of you know whether it's explanandum or explanons, I don't see any strict logical measures by which you can say that those are always those are fixed, right? They're only can at best they can only be fixed by nomological necessity, but. I mean, you're you're wanting to say it's strong the, the kind of necessity that fixes the explanons and explanandum is 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 m more broad than nomological considerations. It, it, so so we are talking about the essence of an ungrounded reality. That's we're not talking this ungrounded reality doesn't have an explanation. So okay, you so you're saying up, that to you can't clarify bring up explanations. It doesn't have an explanation like that's other than it. Like that's what okay, but, but but well, I'm what well, we've already established. I mean, just so on the background, we've already established that grounding relation is an explanatory relation, right? So there, so there's if yeah, you think grounding of it as, is an explanatory relation, right? But but we we've now reached the 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 provisional conclusion that there is an ungrounded ground. This is right. what we are talking about, an right. ungrounded the, the point, ground. Yeah, that's fine. But the thing is that there are multiple reference that could substitute. Like that's a definite description. That no, have but that's your that is your claim. So I've tried to show you that an ungrounded ground is not dependent on something else, which you agree with. And if it's not dependent on anything else, then it cannot fail to obtain in the next possible world. It can only fail to obtain if it is dependent on other grounds. I think this is another way to put my, I, I'm going to say this and I'll give you the last word. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The summary of my anxiety is something like this. You have a definite description. The thing that grounds all other things that has no ground. Now, you want to say that that can only pick out the same thing in every possible world. And what explains the necessity of that is some kind of logical necessity. But when I look at that definite description, there can be, very, I don't see anything that would logically commit to, commit me to say that that must pick out a mind or that must not not pick out a mind. Like when we think about various candidates of what could be, you know, a mind, whether or not mind or whatever, right? I don't see any kind of logical implication on saying that that definite description picks out the same thing in every possible world, whether that be a mind or not. And 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 that's that's the anxiety. I'll give you the last word, and then I I actually. I'll be on Parker. Parker invited me on his live, so that's why I have to go. Go in. You can have the last word. Uh, so just to be clear, I never mentioned mind. I never said it picked out a mind. Uh, you. This is a new term 
that you introduced right now, right? All I'm saying, and this is a repeat, uh, but you guys, I, you, took, you, you gave me the last word. So what I'm saying is that once you analyze this logically, uh, any independent reality is going to be modally necessary. Okay, well, if you wanted me to respond to that, that would be defeat what I would just say. I, I mean, the, I know you. No, that's I my claim. I'm just repeating. Okay, the claim. I, I acknowledge that's that you never I'm said anything about mine. The point is, is yeah. that that definite description, as far as uh, given what we know, could refer to a mind. It might not refer to a mind. That There's is nothing a whole about other that definite question. description. There's nothing about any kind of set of logical axioms that I'm aware of that I accept versus the the contents of that description, that definite description, that necessitates that it always picks out a mind or not a mind. That just Prasasa shows the possibility. But, but I never said that. I know. I, I, never wait, said wait, it I know out of mind. I know. I don't know why you're saying. Look, I'm saying. But I know. I acknowledge that. I, I'm not clear. That's yeah, not yeah. my point. My point. I know that you're saying it's not a, that you're not saying it's a mind. The point is, is that that definite description could refer to a mind. And it also may not refer to a mind. That's okay, precisely so, the okay. issue. Here's if it could refer another, to either here's, one of them. Here's another run at this, right? So. Um, here, here's a totally different, a different approach, right, to the to the same issue. So I tried one, you didn't like it. That's fine, no problem. Okay, so here's a different one. And by the way, my app is screwing up. I can't fully really see. But the other approach would be this. So let us suppose that in each possible world there is an, an independent reality, but they're all different, like what you wrote on the paper. Right. Okay. So um, if they're all, let's say, let's just deal with two possible worlds because it's easier. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I do so need we to wrap have... this up. I really want to give you your time, but if, if you no, could, the, if you okay, could no, look... that's fine. Okay. Why don't we? What? Okay. Do you want me to to, to finish or? I want yeah, I finish up, but minute? just if we can, if you could see this, let's, let's head towards the light as best you can because I want you to complete your thought. Okay. So uh, let us pause it. There are two independent realities, one in each possible world, I R A, I R B. Okay. Uh, if we're saying they're not identical, then they have to be different in some way. Okay, so one of these independent realities must have must have some feature that the other one doesn't have. Okay, as soon as we posit that the independent reality that has the additional feature that the first one doesn't have, this independent reality will be dependent on this extraneous feature to be what it is, and therefore it won't be independent. Okay, that would need to be explored. Are you free tomorrow? I'll invite because. I'm going to go to Parker's live. You, uh, that's where I'm going right now. No, that's um, fine. You go. I, 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 I'm not like, it, it's okay. that. We I don't know how to respond with that without getting in, you know, but, but if you're free okay. to, if you're free this weekend. Um, yeah, I'll try to find you. Do when do you usually do these? You see, message me, Hey, I'm free right now because I'm free this weekend. And then I'll go live and we could, we will have a sure. ded more dedicated time. No problem. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. You have a good one. Khalil. Thanks for coming on. Okay. Take okay. it. Bye. 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 Guys, okay, I'm going to Parker's live. See y'all. Oh, my YouTubers. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if I can stream this. I guess I could stream it on YouTube. Yeah, I'll stream it on YouTube. So hang on, YouTube, okay? Uh, I'll check Discord, Andrew. I'll see y'all later. Or uh, I think people should be able to have the choice prior to sentience. Oh, for sure, right? Okay, so we're just saying, like, what happened to the homeboy? He just left on accident. He'll be back in a second. Don't worry. No, I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying, like, um, Dean. No, like, I watch you guys. You know, I respect what you guys are doing, man. That was Dean. No, that's not Dean. I'm saying like I watched Dean. Like he, I don't know who that guy was, but um, oh, okay. No, I'm just saying like I respect what you guys are doing, but at the end of the day, like I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate over here. Like, no, 100, I do. 
So then how are you playing devil's advocate? Because I'm talking about like, I don't believe sperm are alive. I don't believe that they are actually babies. And <laughs> you okay, guys, I don't know how that's how that's devil's advocate, bro. I just Sorry. I don't know how you'd run that. Uh, I don't know what y'all are talking about. So I'll just I'll just I'll just let you run whatever you'd like to on him. Are you a Christian? I don't really label myself as Christian, but yeah, let's go for it. Okay, is it is there a back is there a back loop because I don't hear anything. I don't know if it. There might be. Oh, yeah, there is. Uh, So you believe the Christian God exists, though, right, Jason? Oh, so he's one of those like I I'm not a Christian. So Jesus was Jesus was God. That's Christian in your book, right? Okay, it doesn't matter. Yeah, sure. Like, do you think Jesus is God? Right. Okay. Um, Do you think that if you don't believe in him and you go to hell, eternal conscious torment. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you think Jesus paid the punishment for your sins and on the Absolutely. cross? Yeah. What punishment did did he he took on your punishment? And yours. Okay. My pun. You're saying the punishment is eternal damnation. That means that did Jesus suffer eternal damnation? Of course. So Jesus is in hell right now. He, he took the keys. That wasn't my punishment. No, he took the keys from hell. So he... That, that's not my punishment. Look, think about what you he said. He believed right? you your punishment. So what are you talking about? The point is that... It, look, I'll just use a simple analogy. Let's say the judge sentenced me to 50 years in prison. You take my punishment. How many years do you serve? What are you talking about, man? Fifty years? It like if, if you, you took my pun, yeah, you 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 took huh? yeah, you would take fifty years. Now, if you took okay. five years, would you be taking my punishment? Knock knock. Who's there? Jason. It's Danny. Answer the question. Repeat it. If my sentence was fifty years and you only took five years, did you take my punishment? Absolutely. <laughs> Why are you a real person? Like, obviously, that's not the same punishment. Hello. No, man. How much have you had to drink tonight? Quite a bit. How old are you again, Jason? Twenty-five. Why? I was just saying. I'm Pretty over sure you're not young. No, yeah, I'm yeah. Good. I was just saying. I was just saying. So, you, you you can't have this conversation. We can have this conversation, but you guys are obviously like you got to sober up, right? <sighs> yeah. Okay. All right. Go sober up. Come back later. Thank you. Come again. All right. <laughs> See you later, Jason. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next person. How you doing, Denny? Yeah, hey, I'm. J- J- I, I was doing fine, and then I first person drunk. Parker, what is this? We need, we need quality control here, Parker. <laughs> the quality control is negative. Yo, what's up, how old are you? I don't think. Was uh, was a, a choice. Yeah, yeah do you believe that the Christian God exists? It's not fair to. I do. Else. I do. What are you listening to like in the background? Girl, I don't want to be around her. Oh. What? Oh, oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so do you believe the Christian God exists? Yes, sir. And why is that? Well, um, can I just say that I used to be an atheist. Um, when I was about 14, I started watching evolution videos. Um, I started asking my youth pastors really hard questions, you know, about the Grand Canyon. You know, just your basic um gotcha questions that you can ask any any christian that they won't really be able to answer right i'm sure you you know plenty of those um but to be honest with you um i hope my grandma's not watching but um through my use of um plant medicine um i'll just say that um i really connected with my spiritual side and I dabbled in Satanism a little bit. Um, I didn't feel right with that. And to be honest with you, 
I know it may be a lame answer, but Christianity just felt right with me. Um, and then I learned more about other religions, such as the Quran. And then um, I'm, I don't know if you're how familiar you are, familiar you are with that, but um, they believe that Jesus was a prophet, just not the son of God. So that's one thing I wanted to say earlier when you compared, you know, your belief of that guy, uh, you know, watching whatever, right? Um, I wanted to say that there, there's, it's not quite the same because even if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is a son of God, there is at least like a lot of historical evidence that he did exist. So, but to clarify, you don't think Jesus is God? No, I do. I do. I thought you maybe I misheard you. I thought you said he was just a prophet or something. No, I, I was saying that's what the Quran believes. Oh, Danny, okay. you can take this real quick. I'll be right back. Give me one second. All right. Um, uh, I maybe I have ADD or something. Are you saying that you became a Christian because of drugs? No, I, I mean that I'm saying that helps with my spiritual path because I felt like. Okay, so why are you a Christian? Um, because it, it feels right to me compared to other religions that I have explored. Okay. That's hard to engage with because like you've heard the, the adage facts don't care about your feelings, right? Um, it could be that, look, a lot of people feel a certain way about how they want the world to be or how the world is right. Like the world feels flat, you know, I mean. Yeah, I don't believe in flat earth. I don't just believe everything because it's... So why is this feeling particularly, like, moving to you? Um, well, um, it's hard to describe the Holy Spirit, especially, like, because when I was an atheist, that just sounds like mumbo-jumbo that can't be... Does the, does the Holy Spirit love you? It feels loving, yes. Okay, so... Like if and the Holy Spirit is a person, right? Um, more of an entity, I would say. Oh well, that sounds like heresy, but it's okay. Um. Oh, is it? I, I'm see. I don't. I don't exact. See, maybe you know more about Christianity than I do. Well, That's I'm all. Okay. I mean, I'm fine with heretics. I mean, they the, the Catholic Church would both burn us both at the stake. You know. Well, so I'm if just, I'm wrong, I'm if I'm if I'm wrong, I'd like to know I'm wrong. You know. Typically, the the Holy Spirit is counted as a person of the Trinity. Um, and they somehow indwell your spirit or, you know, it's kind of some, the, the point that you have the spirit as a Christian, as a bona fide Christian, according to mainstream Christianity. But I, I find that so weird because like when I see Christians that say they have the Holy Spirit, like they can still get conned or scammed, right? Like the whole Holy Spirit really doesn't do anything. He just watches you like fail. Like he doesn't, it's like the worst imaginary friend ever. Well, I mean, I would say the Holy Spirit doesn't like being a Christian doesn't just mean life is perfect the next day. I would say for me, the Holy Spirit is like that feeling when I'm living in perpetual sin and I know that I feel like I could be doing better and that I feel like God's calling me for more. Like, was, here's a question. Here's a question. If the yeah. Holy Spirit left you right now, how would you know? Uh, it's a great question. I mean, I don't know if they come and go, right? If, if the Holy Spirit abandoned you for the entire month of April, what, what, what difference would it make? Well, I, I think if you call on the Holy Spirit, it can come to you at any time. Also, it may not come to you at any time. It may not do anything. People called on the Holy Spirit many times in the past, and now that happened. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the hard, that's also the hard part of being a Christian is not having all the answers and not feeling like I have control anymore in a way, because we can't look at it in like a quantified way, like we can science. Caleb, it sounds like your Christianity and I, I get it, right? But your Christianity sounds like a kind of coping mechanism. Why would you say that? 
well, you feel that it's true, right? Um, it seems like you've experimented with drugs, right? I don't know what your history is, but well, well, drugs, uh, not drugs, plant medicine. I didn't say what it was. Okay, plant, know, medicine, plant, medicine, plant medicine. Sorry, plant medicine is a drug. Right. So plant medicine is a natural thing. I, it's not like I'm like doing hard drugs and saying I met God, you know, like, I mean, does, does God do anything for your life that he doesn't do for like me and Parker? Well, um, the times when I was, uh, faithful to him. Yes. But when I turned my back on him, no. So God abandons you when you don't listen to him. Because not well, even a, say, not even like well, a mediocre parent would do that. Not not yeah, a yeah. Doesn't Jesus also heal non-believers in the Bible? Well, not abandon, but it's like once you know the truth and you still decide to turn away from Him, it says the uh, sin sin leads to death. So, and I mean, and I also wanted to say earlier to your prior point for a coping me mechanism. Mm -hmm. Totally disagree with that because dude, as a Christian, I fear hell all the time. You think I want to fear hell? Wait, that's ex that that doesn't work for you because your fear of hell is overcome by your Christianity. If anything that okay. supports my hypothesis that believing in God is a coping mechanism because it overcomes your fear of hell. It really yeah, just doesn't for hurt. just for just for Danny's quote fire insurance. Fire insurance. Man, that's exactly what my dad says. That's so interesting. Thomas, I appreciate the subscription. Thank you so much. Yeah, my dad compares God to Hitler. Says uh I, I don't know what I can say on TikTok live, by the way. I'm trying to speak wisely. Look, um, well, look, at the end of the day, this is how I see it, right? You're saying that you have this personal relationship with God, that the Holy Spirit literally dwells within you. But it's so hard to tell whether he's there or not. I mean, it makes no practical difference. And that's not what you would expect if there was a being that cared about you that was literally in your spirit, you know, advising you. Like, it's just, you would expect, I mean, like, if Christianity were true, I would expect Christians to to be way better off because they have the, they have a person dwelling their soul that knows everything that cares about them. My expectations that Christians should be way better off. And, and, and well, someone said, one of my friends, Austin said, and nicer. Uh, I think, but really I I'm, see Christian, go ahead. Yeah, no, I agree. A lot of Christians are total dicks, man. Yo, They're Carrie, Christians. thank you so much for the $25 on Cash App. I appreciate it, Carrie. Can we get a W, Carrie, in the comment section? I apologize for cutting you off, but I appreciate it, Carrie. Thank you so much. Well, the, the Bible says our rewards will be in heaven, not on earth. So, um, But I, I totally agree. A lot of Christians are total dicks. Met this one guy who was a youth pastor, and he was, like, being mean to homeless people and – that just really rubbed me the wrong way, man. Look, I'm just saying, look, if, okay, let's use this analogy. If you, if one of your, let's say you're a teenager or middle schooler or whatever, and one of your friends had really rich, smart, loving parents, would mm -hmm. you expect them to be better off than a kid that didn't have those things? Didn't have those things? Absolutely. Right. So why does this not work for God, right? You have a spirit that loves you more than anyone in this world that has all the power in the world. That has all the knowledge of the world, yet you wouldn't expect any difference between me and you. That's like saying that the rich kid is not like you wouldn't expect him to be better off than a kid that didn't have a parent like that. And I just don't get it. So you're saying Christians should naturally be better off because we have God. Using the same reasoning that you used for the, the rich, smart, loving parents. Yeah, I mean, I think God provides us with what we need. Not, not luxury always. Um, well, that's all. I mean, Parker, you can, I don't know, wrap, wrap that up if you want. Uh, yeah, Lennon, thank you for the $6.66 on Venmo. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, I could ask you a few questions, right? Um, uh, do you, do you think that, um, uh, that Adam and Eve exist, existed? Mm-hmm. You do? 
Do you think that incest is bad? Yeah, see, that's when we get into these, these sound like questions I asked my youth pastor when I was an atheist. So sure, but like I could just ask you this question, like again, sure. if if incest is bad, right, and God wants them to be fruitful and multiply, right? How are they supposed to be fruitful and multiply without engaging in incest? Yo, Brittany, thank you for the galaxy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, I suppose thank God, you, could, God could have made an exception to that. And after there were enough people, then incest was no longer viable. I mean, I'm just guessing here. I'm, I mean, uh, okay. So, so then the Old Testament is not applicable prior to its exist, like prior to it being written down. The Ten Commandments didn't apply prior to it being written down. Oh, the, the Ten Commandments commandments speak of incest? No, no, no. The ten, I'm just saying, like, anything in the Old Testament. Because uh, you're saying something no, in the Old I mean, Testament is not applicable. So I guess, I guess you're saying there's a contradiction between Adam and Eve procreating and the Ten Commandments? Uh, no, no, no. What I'm saying is that given the fact that uh, God says that uh, incest is bad, right? There's a contradiction between God saying incest is bad and saying that they should be fruitful and multiply because the circumstance in which there's two particular individuals in which are the first to, to be the people, there's no not other people, there's going to have to be incest. Uh, but again, uh, the Levitical law is what dictates incest being that way. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's one I don't have an answer for, to be honest with you. Okay. So do you believe in Noah's Ark? Mm-hmm. Okay. What was the reason why uh, God killed the people that existed at the time? I believe there was a great flood because the people were rebelling against God and he needed to basically do a uh, people are rebelling now. Absolutely. Would it be justified to wipe everyone off the planet now? If that's God's greater plan, then, then I, it would I would be good. I would be fine with leaving right now, to be honest with you. So you think it's justified if some if if God were to nuke the whole planet right now? If that's His greater plan, and He has tried to spread His word as much as possible, then sure. So you'd be God with killing your whole God. You'd be good with God killing your whole family. Well, that in my belief. That would mean that we would all be going to heaven to live a perfect Fresh life. The hand art, thank you so much. Wait, so all the people who died in the flood went to heaven? Well, the Christians. The Christians would have. Oh, so I wouldn't go to heaven. I mean, I don't even know if I'm going to make it into heaven. That's God's call. You don't know? Well, God's, that's, that's God's call. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to make it there. To be honest with you. Okay, but like, okay, I'll ask you this question: Could God have killed uh, Hitler prior to the Holocaust? Would that have been justified? Sure. It would have. If well, if if God killed Hitler prior to the Holocaust, yeah, like because that would have saved people from dying in the Holocaust. Because you I said mean, that, like, because they it, rebelled against God, isn't that rebelling against God for the Holocaust to occur? Oh, absolutely. I, I I heard that one earlier, and that's that's one I hear you touch on on here all the time. And um, you know, that's that's an awful thing. Uh, I I don't have an answer for that. I think about that all the time. But the more I've tried to reason with that, because that is the hardest part of being a Christian. You know, why does God allow evil things to happen? You know, if God exists, why does all these why do all these children suffer but i i believe that this this life is temporary and we all have to go out one way or another and suffering is obviously never a great way to go so i, I can't answer for that but right. i know well, is, is there anything else you'd like to go over or talk about specifically um well i uh yes i i would say Arguing for Christianity is a lot harder because um, 
you're going off the Bible. But one thing that never sat right with atheism to me is the answer for creationism as a whole. Okay, so just because you don't have an explanation doesn't mean it would be God. Sure, but I think both sides require an equal amount of faith. Okay, how does it require an equal amount of faith to say that your God exists and to say that uh, it is the case that um, uh, that you don't know what the explanation is? Because not, neither one of us have died yet, right? Yeah, I said I don't know what the explanation is. So how right. would that require just as much faith as your view? Because we're both assuming one conclusion. What that conclusion neither am I assuming? That this, well, I assume that you're an atheist, correct? Well, what do you mean by atheist? You, this might be a better question to ask Danny, but I mean, even then I could, I could like posit that type of answer. We could, we could give you reason to believe that it's like more likely that it's going to be like an, an atheist worldview or a naturalist worldview comparative to like a theist one. I mean, so I'm just kind of referring to the afterlife. Do you believe that we just, nothing happens and just like before we were born or I, mean, I don't see any evidence for an afterlife um but there are atheists that believe in afterlife in fact there are non-theistic uh theravada buddhism that's a religion that doesn't believe in the kind of god that we're talking about at all in fact they reject that kind of paradigm but they think there's an afterlife so you can believe in an afterlife and not believe in god right so i think these are two distinct things that we're talking about what explains why there's something rather than a thing or why there's a universe or, or why there's life versus our beliefs about afterlives. I just don't see any evidence for afterlives. I think this is total. I think it's a separate question as to the reality of God. Jacob, thank you well, for $2. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I just, I, I still believe that both take equal effort to believe because to me, both what? Not, um, the absence of God and the existence of God. Well, look, there might be reasons for why, you know, I'm an atheist. Parker, I think, leans more towards agnosticism. But if we're just looking at agnosticism, let's say I'm wrong about atheism, Parker's view would just be... It, the Wait, and again, be, I'm, I just mean atheism about all gods in general. I, I'm atheist as it relates to Christianity, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, look, it's just the point is, is that just because we don't know... Look, the, the tendency for humans is that we want to know things. We want things explained. When things happen, we want to know why. And there's this tendency to just insert an explanation when we don't have one. And I think that a lot of theists do that. Like, why is there a universe might be a legitimate question. But it's it, it brings us anxiety that we don't have an answer to that question. And I think that if you just put God in there, that relieves the anxiety of not knowing. But that's not rational. Well, what's... What's not rational about it? Can I can I explain to you why God is more rational than no God? Of course. To me personally, um, so when I became a Christian again, and I'll say Christianity, well, I, I I have researched it a lot. I know it has a lot of contradictions, but the existence of God makes so much more sense to me because of the fine tuning of the universe. And I'm sure you've heard that argument a million times, but when you really look at how precise everything is, it really screams intelligent creator. I mean, if you look at how creation is, I mean, all of us beings down here have t almost all of them, two eyes, we're completely symmetrical. I mean, we take these things for granted because we see it all the time, but it just seems too finely tuned and put together to not have an intelligent creator behind it. Yeah, I guess, first of all, I mean, there's a lot of responses here. I don't know which one. Maybe Parker has one in mind. But the, you, what you want to say is that there's a set of natural facts that if they were even a little bit different, we wouldn't have life. Okay, let's say that's true. I don't know if that's true. I'm not a scientist. But let's say you're right, that there's a, these set of natural facts that – if you even change, tweak a little bit, there would be no life. Okay, you want to say that that's explained by a set of mental facts, that if those mental facts were a little bit different, um, then there would be no life. But that just, that kicks the can down the road. What, why are the mental facts the way they are such that 
if they were tweaked ever so slightly that we wouldn't have life. And then you can keep on asking that question. So if it's not a problem at the level of the mental facts that are supposedly explain these natural facts, then why would it be a problem in just saying, hey, yeah, these natural facts are the way they are. We don't know why, or there may not be an explanation. I mean, that, that do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, not having an explanation is is valid because, you know, I haven't died, you haven't died. None of us, none of us have concrete proof. I didn't take my iPhone with me when I died or whenever I will die. I wish it'd be cool if somebody could just take Snapchat into the afterlife and just end the whole debate for good, right? Christina, thank you so much for the five dollars on Venmo. But yeah. Um, as far as as concrete arguments, there there really are none. I've I'm just, just saying it kicks down the it, it it kicks the can down the road. Why are why is physics like this? Why is nature like this? Oh, because God is like this. But then the question is, why is God like that? Why did God want to create or tune the universe exactly the way that it is? And it raises the exact same question. So if it's a problem on the level of nature, then it's going to be a problem on the level of the divine. That's the that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, have you have you considered um, creationism at all? Because I was a young Earth creationist. You were a creationist. A young, a young Earth one too. What's young Earth mean? I'm, I'm so not... creationism is broad, but there's a, a species of young Earth creationism where they believe that the Earth is like six thousand years old, six to ten thousand years old. And uh, but there are old Earth creationists, so they think that yeah, they're it's fine to say that the earth is like really old and whatever the universe is really old, but nonetheless, God, you know, is responsible for why there's a universe and why there's life. So what brought you out of creation? If you don't mind. Enough? Well, I don't know if my autobiography is very interesting, but, um, you know, I, I, I think some of the stuff I asked you earlier, you know, like if there's a good God, this is not the world I would expect to see. Well, I mean, the Bible doesn't say that the world would be perfect, right? It's not even close. I mean, I'd be fine with getting close to perfect or 80% perfect. Um, we're, I look at human history, and I want to vomit. Jackie, yeah, I appreciate the hand. Right, thank you so much. Like, we could really just ask you the question, right? Like, it, could we reduce the deaths by the Holocaust by one, right, and still have as good of a world? That's that's a great question, man. I, I I would say yes. I would say. Oh, okay. So then, God should have reduced the deaths, right? Well, should have is a big statement. In my moral belief, yes. I I, I don't like to see death. I mean, the Bible says, or the, one of the Ten Commandments says, "Thou shalt not kill." So. Yeah. So if God can get rid of that without making the world worse, God would do that, right? seemingly seemingly so he doesn't or i'm what do you mean by seemingly well you know we would like to think that god is going to operate in ways that we see morally good at, at all times because he created us but you know so god is god is not all good Good is defined by by us because we're setting the parameters for it. What but, about by God's definition? Well, it's it's a little different when you are the one who set all the rules. So so God is all good given his definition. It's 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 really not a black and white definition of of good and evil. That's so God isn't all good. I, God is perfect. Is God perfect? God is good. Yes, God is good. Okay, but... God is all good, right? Okay, so if God is all good, He can't do anything evil. So this whole question here of you thinking God might have done something evil, wouldn't that contradict God being all good? Well, that that's why I said the good and evil is very skewed by our humanly perspective because we don't have a, a grasp for, for for God's overall plan. Okay, so again, that's why I keep asking you what God's view is. I'm not asking you what your view is. 
because you follow God's view, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you follow God's view, why would you not be able to answer the question if you know what God's view is? Because I, I don't think any any Christian can confidently answer that because we don't none of us know what God's plan is. Okay. All right. Well, is there Danny? Is there anything else you want to address, mm -hmm. John? With them? I'm good. No. All nice right. For sure. Caleb. Appreciate it, Caleb. For sure. How's it going, man? All right, let's go to the next individual, y'all. Only send a guest request if you do believe that the Christian God exists, y'all. We are just looking for some debates. Let's get this next person up here. Yo, what's up? How old are you? I'm 41. Okay, do you believe the Christian God exists? Yeah, yes, I do. Why so? Wait a minute. You you guys are both atheists? Uh-huh. Oh, I did not. I did not. Uh, that's horrible, man. Why? I don't know. You, you, so you just, you don't believe in anything? Or? We don't believe in uh, fairy tales, yeah. Oh. What, then what's the point of everything then? I. What, what do you mean what's the point of everything? How do you exist or move on in life just not believing in anything? I. How do I move on in life? Exactly how you do? Well, well, no, that's not true. I mean, my faith and my my beliefs and make me go forward you know like move on every day you know were you ever we were always a christian Lee? uh you know what yes yes i, I have been you've I'm, been a christian for like over 30 years i would say once i started thinking a little bit clearly or past 10 i'm sure yeah yeah but when the during the period where you weren't thinking clearly how did you go about your life you know, that's a weird, that's a weird question because I have a son and my son's been talking about God since he was like two, weirdly. And I haven't really even taught him anything or... What did you say about God? Weird stuff. I, I've always noticed it's been strange. Give me an example. What does your two-year-old say about God? He's always talking about the man upstairs. He, uh, he'd always like say, well, God doesn't think that's good or God thinks that's good. And, you know, I've never pushed As him. As a two-year-old? What's that? As a two-year-old? I swear to God, yeah. It, it, you... It's strange, yes. Okay. Yes. And we're not like so religious where we're like, around the house where we were speaking of it or stuff like that, unless he subconsciously picked it up from somewhere. But yeah, no, he's been since he's a kid, you know? Yeah. I, my earliest memories, I wasn't, I didn't believe in God. So no, I remember, I literally remember being in a crib watching my mother exercise on a treadmill. That's my earliest memory and no thoughts about God. I was kind of weird, but I don't know. Looks like I handled myself, my toddler self, just fine. Yeah, atheists handle themselves all the time. I don't know why. Maybe you just don't comprehend it because you aren't an atheist. I think that that you can, guys can change from being atheists as you get older. I believe, and you can change from being a Christian as you get older. No, I don't think so. No, no. And why is that? I don't think there's enough time on this planet for me to change. To be honest with you, I bet there is. You think? I think you're just not open to it right now. And with that attitude, shit, we might not see anything change, but you no. easily could if you if you open up your mind. No, I. But anyways, but besides that, I just you know I I I, I put it this way. I guess I'm more. Um, like it's very interesting seeing or talking to atheists because I don't really speak to atheists too much, and it's just very interesting. It's just interesting to see. That's all, you know, or talk to, right? You know. Do you think it's good for God to allow for uh, starvation of children? You know, it's. Does a good parent allow for their kids to starve? I don't think that's God's doing. So God doesn't allow for children to starve. So, I'll can I tell you what I believe? If that's okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I believe we're on a. I think we were sent here for some reason for something as like some sort of qualification of something that we've done in our past life. We, we got shipped down. Thanks Maggie for the 10 bucks. Appreciate I it. I believe we're in purgatory right now. I believe earth is purgatory. 
I believe God shipped us down here with free will. And, and you can't say that you don't have free will. So like, if you can grow off the top of your head, you can go outside right now and kill somebody. Right. Right. But you're not going to do that because you know it's wrong. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. That's your point. So, so starving children, you're saying on here, no, I do not think it's God, but I think it's the crazy. No, does God allow for that? And also, no. why does our biology work this way? Like my, my, um, my stomach, right? The reason my stomach works the way it does, it's because of God, right? Uh, my eyes, my eyes work the way they do because of God, right? Yeah, he created you. To so come if up. God created those functions, how come God didn't create the function that if I do not eat food that I starve to death? Because I think God's more interested in how you um, function as a, a, a Christian or a human being. You know, like, yes, our, our, our bodies end up obviously going bad and we end up dying. I, I think God's more concerned on how we behave on this planet, to be honest with you. That's what he's concerned about. And like, you go back to the Holocaust, do I think it was God? No, I think it was just a bunch of sick people that that obviously weren't thinking clearly. No, no, but God allowed for the children to starve to death, correct? No. No, no. what does allow mean? Uh, no, he's not allowing. He, he's allowing his children on this earth. What does allow mean? Allow means for them to make the decision on doing what they've done. So God gives them, wait, so again, God allows for them to starve to death because God does not prevent it, right? No, that's the free will. Look, does God prevent children from starving? Yes or no? Does he prevent? No, he doesn't prevent anything. He lets people function on free will. Right, so he allows the starvation of children. That's what Parker's saying. He, he he allows it, but when you got to go face him, he's going to be very upset with you. So so he allows it. Okay. No, our bo our bodies work in such a way in which if we do not eat food that we starve to death, God made our bodies that way, right? Okay. Yeah. So effectively speaking, God could have made our bodies in such a way in which if I do not eat food that I do not starve to death and no children would starve to death, right? But that would make you eternal. That would make you a God. He's not making you a God. I'm this realm how would that make us a god just simply not to starve to death if we don't starve and don't die then we are gods then i haven't starved i haven't died am i a god well that's because you've been feeding yourself because there are people, the, that, yeah. they're, they're people that have died and never starved too the, no, yeah I, I appreciate the subscription thank you so much leonardo so so all, I, i'm just what well, i guess what my argument or do not, angels starve to death no, they do not starve. Okay, so they can't exist without starving. They can't. And they're not God. Well, they're they're the closest thing to God. I mean, they're God's. But children. they're not God. But they are not the God. No. Yeah, that's the point. So, do you understand my point there? I do understand your point. The point is, it's not necessary. It's not necessary for children or anyone to starve. Not necessary. Yeah. But like, let's just say. Let's just say that we come on this earth and he gives us free will. As us as human beings, we all have. Uh, you what does know, free will have to do with starving? Uh, what's, what, what, what's starving got to do with with uh, with anything that we're kind of discussing right now? Right? Okay. Okay. Are you just saying that it doesn't free will is irrelevant? No. Like, so my child is living. I need to feed my kid so he doesn't starve. That's my free will for of me. Yeah, but no. there are obviously cases where people starve and not because of anybody's actions. And that's probably because of the bad governments they live in and the horrible people around them letting that happen. That's God will judge them when the day comes. Do you understand? Well, are you well, I, I don't I don't see why anyone would believe that starving only occurs because of other people. Well, starving's happened because the stupid parents abandoned whoever's starving. Look, that, that... Fine, fine. People starve sometimes because of others. But some some people starve not because of anyone else. Because they get dropped in the middle of a desert. You know, let's say, let's say that there's a there's a particular severe weather attack in which, uh, like makes it makes it so that they can't make enough crops to feed people, and then people right. die because they yeah don't are famines because famine. of famine. Oh okay. yeah, like yeah, yeah, no no okay a drought. I get what you're saying. Yeah, so 
So if I, you know, I mean, obviously I'm shooting from the hip here because I don't want to bore you guys with me thinking for 10 minutes, but uh, who knows what God saw. So like, say, I believe when a natural disaster happens or something big happens, are you guys not believers in like, yo, Roger, thank you for the $20 yo, on cash out. Can we get a W Roger in the chat, man? Thank you so much, bro. W. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you. W sometimes, Roger in the chat, everyone. Sometimes someone would kill one to save a hundred thousand. You're right. So, so maybe that, that this natural disaster had to happen for some sort of reason for everybody to go forward. Right. Is it, are there any cases of when people, are there any cases of a person no, starting so What he's death? saying is that a better world comes from people getting killed in severe weather attacks. Yeah, that's what he's saying. But, but and then also, no, yeah, no, uh, you're focus on Danny's point. Me. Like, sometimes, you know, God saves you from certain things for some th certain things, or, you know, like, they, some things have to happen for the future to come. Yeah, are there any any cases of where someone starves and it's unnecessary? Any unnecessary starvation? Spellbound, I appreciate the subscription. Thank you so much. Is there any unnecessary starvation? Uh, well, well, sure, like what you okay. said. Okay, well then, I don't know. Now it sounds like you're contradicting yourself. No, I mean, the, if the tornado comes and wipes out stuff and there's no food for someone to eat and they yeah. end up... so why would God allow something that's unnecessary? That doesn't even make sense, right? It seems like anything that God would allow would be for a reason. But if he's allowing something for a reason, that means it's not unnecessary. So unnecessary starvation is incompatible with a good God allowing it. Well, well, okay. So, so in Egypt, when when God uh, did the seven, uh, he he unleashed the seven sins on or seven whatever plagues plagues on Egypt. That was because those people were what? What does that show, Lee? That shows that there's a lot of sick people on here, and you need no, to no, no, no. Out. Look, just because you could point out a case where maybe it was justified to allow starvation, so it wasn't unnecessary, doesn't take away from the fact that unnecessary starvation is incompatible with the kind of God that you believe in. Space Doge, I appreciate the subscription. Thank you so much. I believe when when some kind of disaster. Roger, happens. thanks for the twenty bucks. Wow, I'm I'm like rich now. That's crazy. I, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm going to upgrade to Subway tomorrow. So, <laughs> all right, Lee. Lee, look, the point is that your God wouldn't allow anything unnecessary to happen. He always does things for a reason. So you can't believe that there's anything unnecessary that occurs, including starvation. I, I think everything's done for a reason, absolutely. Well, then then you're that's contradicting the claim that there's some people that starve unnecessarily. You can't think that everything has a reason, but then some things are unnecessary. Because to say that something's unnecessary, there's no good reason for it. Well, some things are necessary, like, you know. Like, I'm not, that's not what, look, track, Lee. I'm fine with saying some things are necessary. But the fact is, is that you can't simultaneously believe that everything occurs for a reason and then say that there are unnecessary events. Lip, thank you for the subscription. I appreciate it, Lip. And well, if you can't understand that, then I, I give up. Okay, so let's say if there's a horse that breaks his leg and the, the horse is done and it can't move anymore, you shoot the horse in the head put it out of its mer mer uh, misery, correct? What does that show? That shows that sometimes God is like giving people like mercy. I'm not disputing that, Leah. Le that's not what I'm disagreeing with you on. I'm not oh, saying, okay. I'm not saying there are some cases where God, what God allows, you know, he has good reasons for. You can't think that everything is like that while simultaneously thinking that there unne there's unnecessary starvation. I, I understand, but Okay, fine. So you're, we're 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 triggering on what Kevin. I thank you for the subscription. I appreciate it, Kevin. Believe as a Christian, but as an atheist, if you don't believe in any sort of creator, what do you believe in? I don't even understand. So why do you believe bad things? Happen? I don't. I don't believe that there's a being that loves you as more than anyone else in the world that cares about you because or anyone else. Because I look at this world, I see how, what this being would have allowed, and that's incompatible or inconsistent with thinking that. They're a loving being that cares. That's yeah, what I don't believe in. But moving but forward, for, thank you for the subscription. I appreciate it. Thank you. First, first, what I what I first thought, what I what I said to you is I believe we're in purgatory here. So this world's not supposed to be perfect. God never said it. I never said, look, I'm just saying you asked me 
you know, about what my belief structure is like in terms of what there is. What I don't believe is that there's a being that cares about his creation and is in control of it. And, 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 and you know what? Uh, you know, I mean, when, when I was younger, when bad things happened to me, I'd always say, why me, God? Why me? And, you know, now that when I get older, I, you know, like, whatever, you know, I kind of understand when stupid things happen or when major things happen. So a lot of people don't know this. And um, Himmler, one of the letter, uh, leaders of the SS, I, I'm going to use Himmler, not the mustache man, because it, TikTok won't track it as well. But yeah, okay. he... He one of the reasons why they they invaded Poland, right? Um, for just to because they needed space for the Germans to live, okay? And they wanted to kick out all the Polish people, but there were there were problems. They were Polish people that looked Aryan, and especially there were children that looked Aryan, but that were under Pol you know had Polish parents. You know what they did? Okay, they kidnapped two hundred thousand Polish children that looked Aryan. To re-educate them in Germany, basically they they took they ripped families apart just because they're, they they looked Aryan, so that they can re-educate them. And yeah. I think I think all those people, I think if they believed in God or had a soul, and could, you because you, you should be able to feel inside your soul what's good and wrong, right? What's bad and what's good i mean those people i can't they were lost i don't know but the point is is that we're what park where parker and i are coming from we're not wondering oh i stubbed my toe this morning why god why me or oh no you know um my, i didn't get the bonus i wanted you know or oh my girlfriend broke up with me that is not what we're fucking talking about here we're talking about a level of suffering the starvation a level a magnitude that you're you're completely ignoring right well, can i ask you something danny Okay, I, I'm just, you know, I'm being honest here. Like, okay, one of the things, the reason I, you know, because inside me sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm not a good person. Sometimes I want to do bad things. I do. And I'm, a, you know, like I could turn out to be a very mean person. But I refrain myself because I don't want to do harm to anybody. What are you so talking about? Lee, where are you talking no, about? No, I'm trying to get to a point. So as an atheist... If you don't believe or you're scared, if you're not scared to go to hell or if you're not scared, to, then like what prevents you from just being a complete crazy person? That's just projection, bro. My, my desires. Yeah, literally my desires. So so that keeps you in your desires, keep you in check. And, just like uh, yours. Yeah, I'm just asking, you know, I'm not I'm not. It's I'm, the same thing. We have, I don't have any desires to hurt people in the way that you've imagined. So and I, nor I, do you. Say if you accidentally like or if you. If you murdered someone, would you care that much? Yes. Presumably. Yes. I mean, I mean self-defense. I don't know what you're counting as murder. But like self -defense. What's your punishment? But though? even in case of self-defense, I'd feel bad. But what's your punishment? What, what, like, if you're not being punished. Just, we, what, what does this have to do with the overall point? I feel like barbarians were atheists, right? So they would just chop people's heads off and they didn't even care, care right? If anything, they just go around... If Killing anything, they people. were the, – the, his, the history of humans has been very theistic, not atheistic. The majority about, of humans have been theists, but the majority of be, beings have been – human beings have been religious. But if you including don't Including the barbarians that you're talking about. Yeah, but if you don't follow God, then like – like say if there was no police officers or cops, wouldn't it just be like kind of like a free for all then? I don't know. If Wait, let me ask you a question. Cops should stop P3O from graping children, right? What's that? Cops should stop a P3O graping a child, right? I, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Okay. God sees a P3O groping a child, can't stop it, doesn't stop it. Did he do something wrong? If, if, if he didn't stop it and he knew yeah, about it? And he knew about it. AK, thank you for the subscription. I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. I think AK. you did something wrong. Absolutely. I think oh, okay. Then you think God did something wrong by creating the world because oh, he allowed for said, children to get graped. That. No, I thought you said that. Moxie, thank you for the subscription. I appreciate it. I thought it. you said that the cop did something. No, I, 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 that's the free will of that idiot that raped that child. That's him. Okay, why don't you he's say that with the cop scenario? To, he's going to have to answer to God. And then why, the don't, why don't you say that in the cop scenario? Oh, okay, I, I misunderstood you. I'm sorry. I thought you, I, I misunderstood you. No, no, you didn't misunderstand him. Yeah, ask you said that 
you you understand him perfectly. Why did God not prevent the child abuse? Because of free will. But you didn't offer that as to why the cop should have not intervened. The, the, the cops should have intervened. No, but what, his free will, Lee. What, 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 why wouldn't the cop do his duty by intervening? Because of free will, Lee. Well, his free will should tell him to save that child. No, but the, what about the free? What about God's free will? Should, should, should it tell God him the same thing? God does not have free will. God sent us here to have free will for uh, to God judge doesn't him. have free will. Who doesn't? God. God does not have free will. No. So God doesn't make. God is forced to do everything that he does, or is he like I, a robot? What is he? I believe we're in purgatory, meaning that he sent us here to figure out what kind of human beings we no, are. No, that's not what I asked. I'm asking, is God a robot, or is he forced to do things? You know, Danny, I, I, I'm sorry, but, you know, like, that is, we, we don't know. We're, we, we, we don't know who God is. I, now I don't even know what you mean by God. God, God, I believe is the creator, the the Almighty, the the you know the yeah. But but if you take away free will, you, on most people's view, that's taking away some kind of agency. Like seems like God is either forced to do everything that He does, or He's more like a clock, just does things, like doesn't make decisions. Well, listen, I, I'm I'm not here because I I believe in life. We all really don't know what's going on here because none of us have any idea correct so well one of us has no idea here no no three of us have no idea okay because you're not going to tell me who god is because i don't think you know well, i can tell you, you what he isn't <laughs> well i understand what you're i know where you guys are coming from i i get it but but i i think we all on this planet for us to function as normal human beings we have to have free will and free will determines whether we're going to do good or bad on this earth. And that's pretty simple guys. I, I don't know how else more to explain that. Right. I don't even know what you mean by any of this stuff. Free will, God, I think you're just using terms that you've heard from other Christian apologists and conversations. I, I, I don't even think you know what you're talking about. You, you, you need to be operating on some sort of soul in your body. Correct. I have no idea what you mean by soul. You don't have a soul. What do you mean by soul? What are you running off of that computer that's linked to your to the, the headset? Yes. yes. I'm running off like sugar and fat and like what are you talking about? I I I, I don't I don't I I guess I'm speaking to two soulless. You don't have no souls. I didn't I Yo know. Lee, thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. I never said I don't have a soul. I'm saying I don't know what you mean by soul. Yo, Christian, thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. Soul is souls in your a living is what's making you live. It's what's okay. So sugar, sugar is my soul. Well, then you know you you got to pray to Red Bull since you're. Yo, naked. Trey, thank you for the six dollars uh, sixty six cents. You should you, you should grab a Red Bull can and pray to it. Tonight. All right, I'm going to tell you. Right? That's what you meant. I'm asking what you mean, Lee. What do I mean about a soul? Yeah, your your definition of soul is compatible with ATP. Lee, what, what? thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. I understand what you're saying. Where, where do you think your soul? Where do you think the thing? That I don't. Really... I don't use that term except if I use it metaphorically or if I'm talking about like the soul of um, history is in. I don't know. Like you know, just that you know, like to use it like this synonym, synonymous synonymous with spirit? an essence or something like an essence or something like that. But Did I what say spirit? You, spirit. I, I, what do you mean by spirit? The, the Holy like, spirit, like, your spirit inside you. you what that? is the spirit? Like, look, you don't know what God is. You don't know what free will is. It's spirit, souls. Look, I Christians are not, I'm not just saying this to Lee. Christians, think about what y'all are talking about. When you say these terms, y'all just flip, throw them Philip, out. thank you for the $6.66. Like, like you just throw these terms out and y'all have no idea what you mean by them. I, I, no, I, I do know what I mean. Well, then tell me with the six dollars sixty six cents. Then tell me, define soul very clearly. A, a soul is okay. So you're brought into this world, right? You're born. Just define soul. Prove to me you know what you're talking about. A soul is Connie, something. You thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. Your body, higher energy. The sun is the soul. It, 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 whatever that God sends into your body. Your definition is compatible with me thinking that the the sun is a soul. Oh, and you're saying sugar runs your soul. Your I'm body. saying that's the reductio of your view. 
No, no, I understand we have different views. We're two di- we're two different people. So obviously you're not gonna no, understand yeah, what my I what I mean I by soul. Yo, Charles, thank you for the six dollars sixty nine cents. Thank you, you so you much. You can't take it because you are an idiot. No, you're 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 not intellectually prepared for the discussion. No, no, you're you're telling me you run off a of Red Bull, bro. No, I'm saying you that your definition everyone, by the way. Your definition is compatible with Corey, thinking that ATP or the sun is a soul. That's what you've got to modify your definition or you're reduced to absurdity. I'm going to modify my destiny d- definition when you run off of a Red Bull. No, that's the reductio of Red your Bull, view. Thank you for this. Do you know what a reductio is? I don't, I don't know what you're saying, Dan. Okay, look, look, look. If I define a dog as anything with four legs, why is that stupidly? A dog has four, le- uh, four legs, correct. No, if I define a dog as whatever has four legs, why is that a stupid definition, Lee? Kyle, thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. Thank you so much, Kyle. Huh? Why is that? That's how you define it. I don't know what. Why is that a stupid definition? Because it is. Well, fine. What about if I say Danny runs off? No, the- Lee. Oh, I want that- you to answer my question. Why is it really stupid to say whatever a dog is is whatever has four legs? Because there are animals that have four legs that are not dogs. Cats are not dogs, Lee. I listen. I, I feel it's a dumb bad. definition. Do you see that? I feel bad for you, Danny. I <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, I working, thank you so much for your sympathy. I, I am working for with such a higher power than you, Simon. So, thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. You thank example. you so much, Simon. Can I give you an example? Non, thank of you for the six dollars sixty six cents. Thank you so much, Non. Burger, talk Danny. to me before I explode. Talk can to I give you an example you, of a higher it. power? Daddy, daddy, no, you yeah. can't talk to Burger. Me and you were in a room. Together, no, no, oh God, I would no. eliminate your whole Red Bull soul. In five Lee, 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 hold up, okay, Lee. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yo, Jessica, thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. Thank you so much, Jessica. Do you think sewer slide is is a sin? <laughs> I love Parker. So do, do I think what? Do you think sewer slide is a sin? What sewer slide? What's that? Uh, what does it sound like? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Suey. Suey. Side. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, suicide. Suicide. Okay, I'm you sorry. can't say that. TikTok to us. Okay. Oh, oh, oh I'm so do, sorry. Do you think that's a sin? Okay, okay. Do Callie, I, thank you for the $6.66. Yes, thank you, Callie. Yes, I do. You do think that's a sin? Okay. I do think it is, yes. Okay. What is the definition of sewer slide? Is it going to be that you, like, intently engage in action knowing that it's going to lead to your unaliving? Correct. Yes. Okay. God, when he engaged in the crucifixion, Right, he intentfully engaged in those actions, specifically knowingly it was going to lead to his death. So he engaged in sewer slide. Right? Do you believe that God sinned? No, I believe that that it was the will of the people that hung him and crucified him, and and that that's yeah. But he intended that that they were going to do that. Well, no, yo, I, Ruby, thank you for the five dollars. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. I understand what you're you're saying, but that was to prove. Connor, thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. Thank you, Connor. He was proving to himself that that the world wasn't ready for Jesus. You know, it, you know, so they got rid of him, and you know that that was a lesson to be learned right yeah, there. Yeah, but he, that, he he engaged in those actions, like specifically on that day, knowing that it was going to lead to, uh, lead to uh, what's it called? Uh, lead to his his demise. Right. right, he knew he knew that that's what's going to happen. Right. So again, yes. he engaged in those actions specifically, knowing knowing that it was going to lead to his death. That's exactly what a self unaliving is. So that means specifically that that uh, Jesus engaged in sewer slide and therefore sinned. Right, and Jesus sacrificed his body for the sins of the people, is what Christians believe in. His life, right. Um, okay, Jesus but the, is that still not sewer slide, right? How's that any different than like someone who uh, is a kamikaze f- pilot? Well, it's not sewer side because because he sacrificed himself. For, so did a kamikaze pilot. Well, he sacrificed himself for his country. So did a kamikaze pilot. <laughs> yeah. Well, he did it for the people, for his people. That that's Kyle, thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. That's what the Christian is belief is believed uh, uh, based around is that Jesus came on Earth and sacrificed Himself for the sins of the people. 
That's that's what Christians believe. You 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 really don't understand what Parker's saying. I understand what he's saying that God uh, Angel, thank you for the subscription. made him cause Angel. make a sin. I understand, but the point is that saying that Jesus sacrificed doesn't mean that he didn't suicide. Courtney, thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. Thank you so much, Courtney. I, I, I see what you're saying. So maybe, okay. maybe, maybe that's a different definition of a sin. Then let's just say he he suicide for his people, right? Yeah. Okay. So Jesus committed or did suicide. I for the thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. Of his people. Huh? For the better good of his people. All right. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, but that was still a sin, right? No, because a sin's like if you suicide for because your cat died. Okay, so so a sewer slide is okay in certain scenarios only when God does it. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I yes. That's what I believe in. I, I'm sorry, but that I, that's I'm gonna go with that tonight. If I then, engage in that exact Danny, same action, Danny's like, going with Red Bull tonight. I'm going with that, and Danny's going with Red Bull. Okay. Lee, next question I got for you, Lindy. Lindy, I appreciate the hand. Thank you so much. Do you believe in Noah's Ark? I absolutely do believe in. And Noah's do you Ark. believe that there were babies that were alive at that time? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Did, uh, did God kill those innocent babies? Was it was it justified for God to suffocate those innocent babies? God killed those those people because I, I well, I'm assuming or what I've read or what I've known is that that they were c committing too much sin and they were just barbarians and God said you know what these people ain't doing it right they're full of sin wipe it clean let's start over absolutely so so you do think it was good for God to kill these babies and well, you're putting it. He had to kill the whole race because it, it was good for God to suffocate babies here. He he had to eliminate the whole sin. He world. had to eliminate. Why couldn't he have transferred like a uh, teleport of the babies to 2025? Just Marty McFly their ass to 2025. Well, that, I, yeah, well you know what? I'm, I'll ask him when I get up there. I don't know, but I mean, what what? So, I, I so could, he could have done that. Well, yeah, he probably could have done a, a million. He could have done that. So again, he could have saved those kids but decided not to but maybe he just had to erase <laughs> danny he just had to erase say that again some things sometimes you know life like things need to be done in a miss me with way. it i appreciate the six dollars 66 cents thank you so much miss me with it see that's a oh, they asked what's your what's danny they just danny, gave you six dollars and 66 cents that's symbolism for satan right you my just cash app is on my they were sending me that why my cash app is on my bio guys it's um it's hashtag it's the Money symbol, Danny Phil talk, same thing. Yeah, Lee, wait, what, what's wrong with 666? It's the sign. It's a symbol of the devil. No, it's not. It's 616. Is it really? What are you talking? That's no. Yeah. It's now you're going to get people to send 616, bud. It's 411. What's 411? Is the symbol for the devil, 411. Or okay, is that so, it's new, it's, so it's not 666? No, I'm kidding. 411 is the uh, symbol for... Um, information number on your cell phone but yeah i was no. like i was like what 666 is this. i grew up knowing that's the symbol of the devil i don't know is is it not well that that's probably what you might associate it but i think it's pretty clear that um it's 616 if you look it up you that's two apparently guys, what it is you two guys both seem like very very good kids i i i, I think you're great people and uh i hope one day that you know like it, what you believe in is what you believe in. But uh, all I got to say is that life changes. And, uh, I, you know, I'm 42. And sometimes you might see something in your life that makes you change towards, you know, like a religion more, you know. And and, and I are your guys' parents atheists? Thanks, Miss Me. Miss Me for the six dollars and six cents. Um, do my parents what? Are, are your parents atheists too? No. No. They're very... They're Big like, Mike of Portland, thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. Thank you so much. He said, "Hail Satan." How do you feel about that? Well, I, I hope one day you guys in your soul start, you know, believing in something other than Red Bull, Danny. Okay, we we can't put our whole life around sugar. Okay? You really think you got something with the Red Bull thing? Well, you said <laughs> you really your soul runs off of sugar. No, I'm saying your dumb definition makes Red Bull a soul. No, you fucked up, man. You, I, you guys are good, man. I, I, I enjoy. I, I truly enjoy your show. Uh, I follow you, Parker. 
Uh, every time I come on here, it, it really gets the thinking cap going. You've talked here. to this guy multiple times, Parker? I Apparently, I have. You, this is your first time cool. talking to Parker, right? Parker, Parker don't remember me. He's too cool. He's big time. This guy's I'm, gonna Parker's gonna be Joe Rogan. I'm uh -huh. definitely not gonna be Joe if Rogan. If I ever see you in my life, I'm permanently banning you, Lee. But I, I mean, <laughs> that's messed up, man. I like you, but you, you, I, you're. I, I'm on here for Danny because first of all, Danny doesn't raise his voice once, never. Danny literally raises his no, voice. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I meant, it's late. I meant Parker never yeah. raises his okay, voice. Yeah, I was about to say. And he's calm, cool, and collective. And Parker knows how. Danny, you get too mad. It's because of the Red Bull. It's because of the Red Bull. We'll say it's because, it. you know, the, my my soda addiction. So, Just oh, for real, bro. I stuff. feel you on that. I feel you, you on that. Don't drink that much pop. You know better than that, man. I'm probably, I'm. We're we're aiming for I have, fifty I have a, I have years old. I'm, I, I, is there a point of living after fifty? I, I mean, I, I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, he said, he said I don't even of, really care. Christian said that. So thank you. Out of all the things Danny said, I can't agree with you more. I, I I'm forty two, and when I get to fifty, I don't even know what the hell I'm gonna do. So, <laughs> actual right. midlife crisis. You have a good one, guys. Good night, Bye, Lee. I won't ban you. Thank you. All right, should we end it there? Because I only got like ten minutes. All right, that's that's is about your the time. Do you, are All you right. sure you don't want to go live? No, I got stuff to do. Thanks for every, thanks everyone for the donations and the the the, the coins and all that shit. Uh, appreciate it lights, so much. You. I'm not I'm not as good as Parker about thank, being appreciative, but I am. Uh, Parker, thanks for having me on. Y'all have a great night. Of course, man. Have a nice. good night, mm -hmm. everyone. If you have not already, 